Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the finale tonight. The last uh, pre-game week stream of the season, I think. Well, it definitely will be, because I'm not doing another one tomorrow. Um, and tonight, as you can see, I'm joined by someone much better looking than myself. Luke, a.k.a. Disable, who you may have seen on the Scoutcast. How are you doing, Luke? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> much better looking, although not quite as good a beard, I'd say. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've all met Luke. If if you kind of, I know when people ask questions, they generally already know what they want the answer to be. So if you're looking for a more maverick pick, um, you're probably going to get that from Luke rather than me. I'd say I'm definitely the uh, the more boring out of the two of us. Um, but quickly, while we just jump into, it, I'm just going to because everyone always wants to know what we scored. So got my team on screen this week. A um, little bit of gloating to do. 192 points, way inside the top 10k now. 6673 for me is my rank, 192. But even better, which I'll get on screen now for you, Luke, is Luke's score this week. 199. Uh, bit annoyed about the not 200, I bet. Sorry, mate, I can't, I can't actually hear you. I don't know what's going on. You keep cutting out every time you're talking. Oh, man. Okay. I wonder if it's cutting out for everyone else. I think it's just me. It's sort of you like you talk and then it kind of cuts soon. But um, yeah, hopefully That's I can weird. sort of cope with it. What did you say? Did I get 200 points? <laughs> no, he said, are you annoyed about not getting that 200? Of course I am, yeah. Always strive for more. Oh. I, think, I think like, um, like for me, like you can't moan about having 199, but if it was me, I'd be so annoyed. <laughs> So it means I can't that say that I've hit 200, can I? I can exactly. never say that phrase. Um, yeah, man, Gabardini missing the penalty. He sealed it for me. Yeah, cause I, I, I knew it like, last night, obviously, after a few goals, that I was going to get um, at least 175. And I tweeted, say, Joby, it would be a miracle to hit 200. And then the miracle nearly happened. Harry Kane was just, anything he shot went in. It was ridiculous. Did you see the game, or were you just following it? Yeah, I was watching the game. Um, uh, yeah, oh my god, I was just sitting there thinking, you know, this is going to be quite tight. I think there was a bit of a lull after it's two one. I thought, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll take that. After the Sanchez thing, I would have just taken pretty much any points. And then there was a little bit of a lull after half time, and then Leicester just gave up, didn't they? They just yeah, literally let him shoot. Actually, like for five or ten minutes, they're like all over him. Yeah. Um, I was worried, and um, obviously we're having David. I think you got Davis as well, haven't you? When Leicester scored, yeah. I thought, "Oh, here we go. We're going to end up having negative points, or they're going to win, or something." But wasn't to be. The funny thing, I didn't know when we went live on the Scoutcast. I didn't know that you'd Captain Kane, and when you said it, I thought, ah, "That's not going to do very well. He's never going <laughs> to get anywhere near Sanchez now." So I was actually like, not smug because I never really gave Kane a thought anyway, but. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Thirty-one points. I think that's the second most someone's ever got. I know. Wow, well, that's what I told. I did play FPL back then, but I think I think Rooney got thirty-two. I keep being told. Don't know if yeah, that's true or not, but I, think I, I vaguely remember that, but I don't know whether I can't remember how long ago it was, but it, I, I do kind of remember it. But probably not on FPL. Probably on Sky for me. I probably had him. But yeah, um, I think I mentioned it on the scout cast in terms of captains. I mean, my tactic in general, it hasn't been as much this season, actually. I've generally followed the crowd on captains a little bit more than I usually do. But because Sky is all about the captains, um, I kind of make it my thing to try and try and go with a little bit of a different one. Because I just think if you take a risk on players a lot of the time, it can cost you not only in money, but in transfers. Because you then have to take the player out if he fails. And transfers are like far more valuable than people think. I just think like... Yeah. They're so key, and I think if you do need to, if you do have to have a risk in you, which uh, I think I kind of like to do, then the captain seems the best way to do it. About because as long as you own the player, the main player, as long as you own Sanchez, like I did, um, you kind of covered there. And uh, I bet you, know. you weren't thinking that going into the Leicester game, though. Oh, definitely not. No, of course not. Because that's the other thing. Usually, when your captain's last to go, uh, and say everyone else has failed. It, you're always really hopeful that he's going to do something, aren't you? And he nearly always fails. That's my experience yeah. of it. Um, this time, it, it was, you know, because Sanchez had done so well, I'd convinced myself he was going to fail. But, um, yeah, nice surprise. I will, I will certainly take it. And if Trippier didn't go off injured, i will convinced he would have played that other game as well because Walker seems, well, not only was he injured, which we didn't know about, but I think he's just totally out of favour. It appears that way, anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, out of favour of being transferred, I'd say. Yeah, looks that way. Don't know what. All right, let's. Um, so just for everyone that's like tuned in, there's the usual um, polls, top right hand corner. Uh, just click the little R, you can vote on them. There's four, I think, I put up in the end. Uh, yeah, Gaming 38, Captain Paul. Will has to be rested, which we're going to chat about in a sec. Who to take out for Coutinho? Because I think he's probably the most popular player to bring in this week. Seems to be anyway. Everyone wants Liverpool players. Um, and then who's transfer Gabby Adini out, if at all? Uh, who to, sorry. Uh, and then we'll have a look at our teams and our transfers, because that's always usually a... Usually a requested thing, um, but yeah, Hazard. I own. You do you own Hazard, or do you not have him? I've got Hazard. Yeah, I've had him. Uh, yeah, obviously he looked like he was key for that double game week, wasn't he? And he's just been pretty much dire. <laughs> I think uh, actually um, Chelsea winning the or pretty much having the league sewn up was good for me because I was looking at captain and Hazard for a while. He was my gonna be my guy. And then, um, and then Sanchez scored a goal, so I just went with Sanchez. But he, Hazard, for a few weeks before, was my guy. He was the one I was going to captain. If I'd got five, while well, Jesus, Sanchez, and Kane had done the business, I would have, uh, I definitely wouldn't be as happy as I am now. Yeah, mm. I, I, I own him too. I, I want to, I kind of want to keep him, um, because it's Sunderland and they're at home, and I feel like. Like I like everyone, it may not work out like this, but I think everyone thinks Chelsea are going to try and win. They want to get that record. Uh, they're going to put on a show for the fans. They're getting the trophy. But he played 90 minutes, and he's the most subbed player all this season, and he's just played 90 minutes in a game he didn't need to play 90 minutes in. So now I'm thinking, is he going to be rested? I don't know what you think. Can you not hear me again? I can't. Anytime you speak for a long amount of time, your voice just starts cutting out for okay, me. Okay, so I should only speak for a little amount of time. So basically, if you can hear me on short things, Hazard played 90 minutes when he hasn't done that hardly at all this season. Do you think he's going to be rested? It's so tough to say. I just. Last game of the season against Sunderland. I thought there's two schools of thought in there. There's. It's the final game. Does he want to put on a show? Do you want to play him? Do you owe it to him he, as a player? You'd think you'd think he'd want to play. He'd want to show what he can do, as as he always, you know, every good player wants to do. Um, does Conte care about that? Who knows? He doesn't seem to really mind too much. Um, and then you've also got the FA Cup, the other side of it, where you think is it even worth playing him? What happens if he gets injured in ten minutes and then you're missing him for the final? I mean, Moconte is wise enough and you know experienced enough to know that just because they've been lucky with injuries for most of the season, it doesn't mean that Hazard can't get injured in the game. And I mean, if he did, imagine he did get injured against Sunderland um, and he was out for the cup. I, I think he'd be criticised. Wouldn't people then turn around and say, why he didn't need to play him there? That was silly. But it's all just hypothesising, isn't it? We don't, we don't know. I, I... I've got the the Spurs FA Cup game in my head because in that game he rested Costa and Hazard like they, I think they both came on towards the end of the match mm. um, but he rested them both so I, I think he's going to play pretty much full strength but the I, problem is Hazard's the one I own and he's the one I'm worried about yeah I, if I was a betting man you asked me to bet right now I, I would bet that he started um, but I don't think anyone can say for sure I know there's all this six days rest like people are putting in the chat and stuff yeah that's another valid point to take on board but I think Conte will just do as he pleases and there's not much we're going to we know about it so obviously the fear is if you take him out like me and you are in this position I'm eyeing up Coutinho in for him at least with Coutinho I, I mean I pretty much know he's going to play I, I mean yeah. I can't see so could could Hazard outscore Coutinho? Yes. Could Coutinho outscore Hazard? Yes. Which one is more nailed for the game? Coutinho. So for me, uh, if you don't have any other moves and it's a luxury move, I think it's worth taking that risk because there is a chance he doesn't play. Whereas with Coutinho, there isn't that chance. Um, who knows? that You could do it and you could be hurting, but that's the info I'll base it on and I'll likely be taking him out. I don't know about you. I... I'm really unsure because I want to play him. I, I, I said to you before we started, I, I just put my... Just double-check it's showing, yeah. I've just put my team on screen. 
Like, I've only got one free transfer and no money in the bank, so like, I can't even get rid of an Ichibi. There's not really any moves I want to make. How's it to continue, maybe? I feel like I want to use the money then. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm obviously gonna save some money. That I just don't know where I upgrade really. And, I, and that's with Davies and Yoshida on the bench. If I could play both of those this week. Yeah. So, I mean, I was even thinking of I was gonna take Trippier out for Matip, but now I'm thinking, should I just leave Trippier in because it looks like he's gonna start and Walker's not. He says they're fit. He's fit now. So I'm thinking double Spurs. Are Hull really gonna score? But then they're at home and home team score. So many things to consider. Yeah. If I was you, uh, sorry, because I can't really see your stream, and I've worked it out to hear you now. I just put it on really low quality, and now I can hear you. So now I can't see your team. <laughs> so I've got the opposite right. problem. But, um, well, I'm no, let me. Sorry, I, I've basically got I've got a template team pretty much. You know, like everyone else: Kane, Jesus, Sanchez, Ali. See, Ali is another one I could get rid of. I think if I was you, I would consider getting rid of Ali simply because, if as you know, Ericsson got rested the last game, um, out of nowhere, pretty much. Um, and who's to say this turn, This time it won't be Ali's turn um, and Spurs if they're going to score a lot of goals you would have thought that Kane will be involved in most of them um, I don't know I, I, watching that game last night before the before the third and fourth goal went in like I saw that when Sun scored I saw the speed that Kane ran to try and get into position for a pass like, <laughs> he made me realise he wants that golden boot so much, and then obviously you went and scored two goals, so everyone thinks the same anyway. Yeah, but um, Ali, he just looked tired last night. He and did. He was trying. He didn't stop till the end. Fair play. He was on till ninety minutes, but he looked tired. I thought. Yeah, I thought he looked tired too, but he also looked. He did look threatening to me in terms of he did keep popping up and and doing all sorts of stuff. But then again, everyone did really. Sun, Sun's incredible. I mean. Son could could score a ridiculous amount next game. The guy is just insane. I wonder what price he's going to be next season. Um, he could he could outscore Coutinho this week. I've got I don't know. There's a little part of me that wants to bring Son in instead, but I'd have to take Ali out there, and that's like so sideways. Yeah. The last game of the season, you just know that's going to backfire. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance the guy even plays Janssen with Kane. I mean. It, it's, again, it's just complete speculation. The last day of the season's always got rotation in it. It's yeah. always got it. And, and I mean, one thing's pretty certain is that you would have thought Kane will definitely play. You don't need to worry about him because he's still the Golden Boot isn't a hundred percent sealed, although it looks pretty much likely. Yeah. So I think he's going to play any. Um, I just think if Ericsson gets that rest out of nowhere for almost no reason. I mean, what's he been? Then I think maybe it's Ali's turn. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what really tells me that, but it could be Sun, could be anyone. Um, and I think Ali away at Hull is probably got a, a lesser of a ceiling than Hazard at home to Sunderland, wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah. You'd assume so. Not that Hazard's been in great form, but no. I'd probably uh, agree with that. All right, well, I don't know. I, I, what I'd say to people, because the people, when they watch, they like to see transfers done live. It's not going to happen. I'm going to give it another whole day to decide. I think <laughs> the thing is, I don't feel. The good thing is, I don't feel under pressure now. I'm in the top 10k. Like I'm 6.6k. I, I don't see how much I can screw it up by either keeping Hazard or taking him out for Coutinho. I just don't yeah. really. Yeah. It's not going to be the end of the world, probably. No, you've absolutely so, smashed it to get into that top 10k. Your rise has been insane. Well, I don't really know what happened, to be honest. I mean, I, I say on the scoutcast actually. Like, I, I'm sure you you said it the same. Like, sometimes the luck is there, sometimes it ain't. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, like fine margins. I I really looked at Costa this week. Yeah, I ended up going Kane. It's one of those things. Well, for me, my luck's come at the wrong time. I, basically, my luck has now come in the last two weeks. There's only one more week left. I feel like I'm getting cut off <laughs> in my prime now. I've literally been hanging around. I think it's a hundred and. 25 to 140,000 for over half the season. Just couldn't move from that position. Yeah. Kept going up and down. Week. Yeah. Uh, uh, people saying in the chat I should um, I should make it to 100 hits, 100 points worth of hits. I'm on 96 right now. Okay, so two transfers then, yeah? You haven't two got to save. Yeah. I, I'm really tempted by uh, Sturridge, but I just. It's just, that's just a punt I don't need to take. Mm. I mean, he's obviously he's, he could get any number of goals because he's a wicked goal scorer. But 
You've also got, I think there's also the fact that although Middlesbrough are terrible, Liverpool do need to win and they have do have form for being pretty yeah. crap at home against rubbish teams and there is pressure. So if they don't score, for example, let's just put it out there. Let's say they don't score in the first 45 minutes or the first... It, it starts to build that pressure and you... Um, Especially you know, if I, Arsenal and City score. Yeah, exactly. That news will filter through. And, and even if... You could even say if Liverpool score, um, say, one... Um, and you know they have to push for more goals, obviously, because it's not secure. As long, you know, the longer that goal doesn't come, uh, the more defensive they'll almost get. They'll start retreating. You would have thought, but it's just where the Middlesbrough are off at anything at all. They're so bad that you, sh- you just don't know. And, and with the Sturridge thing as well, I don't think he's completed ninety minutes all season. So I mean, if you bring him in, you're pretty much it's pretty guaranteed he's not going to see ninety minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think if I was really chasing, I'd think about him. But yeah, not for me now. All right, let's um, we'll answer some uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Andy got a guest. Wow, yeah, I did get a guest. <laughs> Luke's already told me as well, by the way, that once uh, once this stream blows up and I'm making millions, I have to remember him being first guest. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, let's answer some questions from the chat. Sane to get rested. Now I own Sane. And I'm hoping he doesn't, but people are, people today have started putting doubts in my mind. I really? think it's because he... Aguero started, and so they think oh, right. Sterling's going to come back in. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't even consider that to be honest. I just, I mean, Pep's made those comments about it being a cup final and all that stuff, and Sané's been really good away from home, and I just think his pace helps them a lot. I mean, it's Pep, so let's be fair. Anyone could be rested. I mean, Jesus could be, for example. I highly doubt it, but. That's what he's like. So, uh, I would have thought Sané starts personally. Is, is that I mean, what? You... Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I'm slightly biased because I own him, but I always think I'm, it's, it's obviously nowhere near as much. But I feel like Sané is also one of Pep's boys, like yeah. Jesus. Obviously, nowhere near as like you know, Pep's always got a love in when it comes to Jesus. But I think Sané starts. And I think it just it's just between Aguero and Sterling. I think everyone else will be the same. I said um, said a few weeks ago, I don't think there's going to be much rotation with City because we've only got a few games left. I think he's got them playing now. Yeah, so, I, so. I also think, um, maybe not in respect to Sonny, but with Sterling, I mean, he's never going to do any better than where he is. He's at Man City. I don't think he's ever going to reach a higher ceiling than that in his career. I mean, I maybe he's only young, so potentially I could get that wrong. But it almost feels like to me... Sterling doesn't have any say there. Do you know what I mean? He sh- he will do whatever he's told and whatever Pep says yeah. because, if anything, his days are numbered. With their money and that manager, he could get <laughs> a far better player. So in my mind, Sterling does exactly what he's told and if he gets benched, he isn't, it's not a problem. There's other players in that team who could go on to better things, could start, you know, not make demands of Pep, but at least hold a bit more respect. You would have thought. That's the way I look at it anyway. Sterling, you do what you're told, mate. And... Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he gets benched and comes on a little bit. But. Yeah, I think and I'll probably say this for so many players this week. I I'm not going to get rid of Sané. I'm not that worried, but I probably wouldn't bring him in. Whereas if you're looking at someone like De Bruyne, I'd probably be much happier bringing him in. So I think he definitely starts, but I, I don't see a big problem with Sané. Um, do you think Fabregas will start? So like we already kind of chatted about. Well, we chatted about Hazard. I think Fab. Well, the problem with Fabregas is it, it depends. If we knew what the final team was, we'd know if Fabregas was going to start. Obviously, yeah. I think Fabregas has got a chance for the final, like you said. He's yeah, so good recently. I, 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 well, yeah, I said it on the scout cast, and he's playing so well at the moment um, that I think he makes the final team as it stands. And I think you have to work back from that, like we always do. So that's obviously an assumption. So if you assume he plays the final game, then potentially he doesn't play against yeah. Sunderland. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a guess in itself. But I just think he's playing so well at the moment, he pretty much has to put him in for the final team. Whether that's in the two with Matic and Kante, or whether it's in an advanced role, that's where he sort of holds a bit of a trump card because he could play in either position. So, um, Would you I'm, bring him in, though? I wouldn't, too risky. I, I certainly wouldn't bring him in. I've got him, so obviously I'm just going to leave him in there and see what happens. I mean, as he showed the other week, he can come on for the last 10, 20 minutes and score. So, so annoyed about that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, just before he, I think I, I can't remember if I said this before. I, just before he came on, I was just thinking, I almost Hazard didn't do anything, but I had Sane, and I was going to take a minus four to do De Bruyne and Fabregas, and I thought oh, I've done all right here. He fucking scores. 
Yeah. Annoying. It's just the way yeah, it goes so, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I saw a question earlier, though, right? Everyone keeps talking about the hat trick on the final day. Who's going to get it? Someone <sighs> rubbish, probably. If I knew that, I'd be making a lot of money every single season. <laughs> I think uh, it's Ben Tackett. I mean, Man United, uh, Jose, he's going to play the kids. He's already said that. And we're talking yeah. like even just back it's people I've never even heard of. That's true. But then I think, can they be any worse than Smalling? I don't know. True. And Pogba will be playing. Yeah. I mean, Palace... Uh, I suppose Ben Tackett's ceiling is, what, two goals? I mean, I don't know. Has he ever scored a hat-trick in the Premier League? He probably has. But I, I want to say remember. yes, but... yeah. Um, Villa. I don't know. Palace haven't really shown anything in the last few weeks that much. Um, and it's Sam Allardyce at the end of the day. Um, they kind of play They kind of play better when Zaha is on top form, Benteke is on top form, and they counter-attack on teams. If Man United are playing the kids, are they going to be counter-attacking or are they going to have more of the ball? I, I think he's going to do what he's done in the last few games and just try not to lose. You think, yeah, I mean, that would be a wise bet, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it just, just seems to be the way he's setting them up, no matter who's playing. I mean, getting <laughs> two and Zebi in and putting him in the centre mid. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I actually, like, if I'm going to go for a Palace player, I'd almost look at Zaha ahead of Benteke because he's maybe got something to prove against Man United. Um, yeah. And maybe he's looking for a move. Don't know if he wants to stay at Crystal Palace the rest of his life. Probably not. Well, I saw the other day on Twitter, again, it's Twitter, so I don't know how, how truthful it is, he's being offered 120 k a week on a five-year deal and stuff. Yeah. I, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, to be honest, I don't tend to get shocked at money in football anymore because nothing really surprises me. Like, 120 k Crystal Palace are paying someone, and it's Zaha. It's just, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> he's, he's English, like... Well, he's Ivory, is he from Ivory Coast? Oh, no, he's not, is he? Yeah, sorry, yeah. he's not playing for a movie. Oh, God. Or somewhere he, he could have played for either. I can't remember if it's Ivory Coast or not, but he could play for that or the other team. I'll be, I'll be having Aki and King in the England team in a minute. <laughs> um, it's crazy, isn't it? Because you would have thought there's probably some kid in like France or Spain who's all equally good as him in terms of their output. Because I mean, I think this is probably Zaha's best ever season for output, and he's probably still only got a handful yeah, of goals, hasn't he? Not great. I know he's done quite well assist-wise, but... There's probably some kid you could get for half the wage. I mean, even Traore at Middlesbrough. He reminds me of similar. He looks like the kind of player who could who could become a Zaha player, a little bit better than what he is. Basically, he's got the raw materials, strong and quick. Um, I mean, even Balassi, thirty million to or was it thirty million? Thirty million to Everton. He was better than Zaha. He was the better one. And now he's obviously been out for a long time, but he's never really produced that much. Premier League's crazy. Anyway, I'm yeah, digressing. It's, it's, it's just Premier League and. Uh... And English prices as well, like Michael Keane going to the United or whatever, 25 million. Anyway, what other questions we got here? I'm trying to keep up. Mm. Laurent. Oh, okay. Uh, Gabi- like, if you had Gabbiadini this week, you've got Gabbiadini, haven't you? God, I wish I hadn't got him. I don't know why I even did. I said he was a terrible option from day one. I just kind of, I think I was going to go without Sanchez, which would have, and Captain Czech in the original wild card on that first double game week, yeah, which actually would have worked out better because I, was, I had Oxley Chamberlain in place as well, who did really well that week. So I was actually cursing myself for not doing it. Obviously, I'm very glad now because then Sanchez went mental with that score. So overall, it would have been a bad decision. But I had to bring Gab at the last minute. I bottled it, brought in Sanchez, and as a result of that, Gabardini was about the only person I could fit in. I didn't even consider an each of me. I really, to be honest, I should have. I just thought. I mean, it could all be different. If Gabbiadini scores that penalty, he could have worked out as a better a better option, really. That could have been nine points. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, United didn't look like scoring, so he would have got the three bonus. But what are you doing with him this week, though? Because that's what people are asking. Like, should you get rid? I think I'm going to bench him. Um, just because, obviously, we've, most of us have set up with a wild card, and I've set up with a wild card, which means that my bench player, so to speak, is, um, what's his face, Josh King. I can't not play Josh King against that Leicester defence after the other night. He's in such good form as well. Even yeah. if Leicester had beaten Spurs, I'd still play King. Yeah. So, I mean, it comes down to could I look at Sturridge maybe and take hits? Uh, well, I've got two free transfers, so I'd probably only have to take one hit. But I just, I just think the sensible thing is just to bench him, play King, which I'm happy with, and then look at defence and try and pick up a differential in defence. Yeah, I mean, for for a lot of people, like you say, especially those that have set up on wild cards, they'd have. Um... They've probably got the two Southampton defenders, Yoshida and Stevens. 
And yeah. They're yeah. playing Stoke at home, so they're probably not even that bad to play ahead of Gabbiadini. I just, I don't know, it just something that makes me think Gabbiadini's going to score this week. Yeah, it's like the Negredo one, isn't it? It's yeah. pretty much the same thing. It's written in the stars. But then he talked about Austin as well. Maybe he gives Austin the last game. I, and, but, I, and he's come out, the other thing as well, he's come out to say that he's still on penalties as well, that he's their first yeah. choice. They got, yeah. They're going to get one. Whether or not he scores it, I don't know, but they're going to get one. I, th- I think if I was in the position um, where I had him and I wanted to move him out because that was just how my team was, who would you go for in that slot around his price? If you weren't going to take a hit, who would your choice be? I'd probably have to say Vokes after I wrote him off and he's done so well since. <laughs> uh, I, I think Swansea aren't definitely safe, are they? But it's pretty much guaranteed. So Lorente, I mean, on the, hang on, let me have a look at the polls. Who did we put down? I can't remember who it was now. Uh, uh, Lorente Vokes or Origi. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go Origi. I no, just... I, I don't really like him either, to be honest. No. I think he's done too great recently. I think it is out of Vokes and Lorente. Uh, who is has... Burnley playing at home? Who is it? West Ham. They're... Yeah, um, but their defence has been a lot better apart from uh, the other night. The, the defence in general has been markedly improved. It, so... West Ham, it reads out though, isn't he? Yeah. I honestly think I'd go Lorente. I just think he's been great. He's scored in little braces and stuff. He's got the potential to get a brace for you. West Brom, as we know, have been on the beach for a while. I think I'd go Lorente. Oh, of course, Swansea is safe. Shit, I forgot Hull would definitely down. Sorry. They're only not safe if... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, Lorente, I suppose. I, I just... I, can't see, I couldn't see myself bringing in a Swansea... Uh, a Burnley player on the last day of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But we, we, you know what the last day of the season's like. So I, I think the goals, and I also think this is almost a trap because it's too obvious, but the, the game with loads of goals for me is Leicester and Bournemouth. Oh, the and people in the chat go for people it. in the chat are saying that Reed's out, which I didn't know about. So maybe yeah, I'm... that's what I said. He's, uh, he's out. Oh, okay. I probably, do you know what? I probably would go Vokes then. He's in the form. Form yeah. so often is the key West factor. Ham's, West Ham's clean sheets kind of coincided with him, him and Adrian coming back. Yeah, I don't know why he ever dropped Adrian. I know he was a bit flappy occasionally, but generally he's pretty good. He's, yeah, I thought it was a good shot stopper. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm actually trying to record some questions as we talk. So Danny McDonald said, "Is blocking? I mean, you're going to say no to this. I already know. Is blocking transfers a good tactic? In general, I'd say he didn't say this, but I'll add that in general. He says when 16 points clear. And to me, 16 points." isn't a great deal to be blocking with but I would say it depends which player you need to you're thinking of blocking like if you don't have if you've got Costa for example and your rival's got Kane I'd be very tempted to work out how to get Kane in mm. I'd be extremely scared going into this game without Kane to be honest yeah I mean if Danny Danny's still in the chat I think if he, maybe he'll tell us who he's thinking of blocking but what do you think in general 16 points would you block <laughs> Uh, I think I said it before on a scout cast. I've never, ever even... I don't even look at anyone else's team. Um, probably I should do. <laughs> I never take that into consideration. I always just play my game. But I guess if it's the final day, you've got money on it, um, and yeah. you know their moves, it does make sense. I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't make sense. Of course it does. Um, so if he knows exactly what he's doing, he thinks that move will will block him 16 points, then, yeah, go for it. Why not? I mean... Okay, here we go. So he's... Okay, again, it's hard because you don't know what player... Okay, here we go. He's giving us some info now. So he's saying he's got Kane, yeah, fine. He doesn't have Vardy or Sanchez. He's got De Bruyne instead. So, like, Vardy I wouldn't be too worried about. I think... I think if Vardy's the one that cuts your 16-point lead, you've probably been a bit unlucky. Um, But he's got De Bruyne instead of Sanchez. Would you swap? Um... Would that I swap? Tough, isn't it? That is tough. That is extremely tough. The th- one, one thing I'll say is, and is with Arsenal, you pretty much know if they're going to do anything, if they're going to score, Sanchez is definitely going to be involved. With Man City, it is honestly a lottery every time. They've got so many good players. If they like, Kevin De Bruyne could be deep. He could be up front. He, he, yeah, of course, he's got the explosive potential to do as well as Sanchez. But in terms of hogging bonus points, things like that, surely Sanchez has got far more chance of getting three baps than KDB has. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I have blocked in the past, but usually with a usually with a highest like points difference. I don't know, like where I've been further ahead. I don't know if that makes any difference really. 
Yeah. I'd be tempted to swap De Bruyne and Sanchez. Oh. You're going to kick yourself so much if it goes wrong. Yeah, but then again, how wrong can it go? If, and yeah, if yeah. KDB does really well, then so be it. It doesn't really matter as long as he stayed above him, hasn't he? So I, I guess, yeah, if I was in his position, I'd, I'd, yeah, I probably would make that move. So if I wasn't worried about my, my rival, I wouldn't. Definitely. Oh, not. yeah, for sure. He's quite funny, actually. I was speaking to a guy at work, and uh, me and him have been like one and two for ages. And I, one of the reasons I kept Kane on wildcard, like, this is what I'm saying about fine margins, because he had him, and... I was ahead and I thought I don't want to give someone else Kane as a differential yeah. like, that's just asking for trouble and he kept him and then he didn't have a wild card and in game week 37 he took him out for Costa to try oh and chase oh my god yeah. oh my god no you like, don't take... now, he, he was trying to chase a different league so it actually wasn't me he said he was trying to chase but someone else who had Kane <laughs> so he took him out for Costa and now he's like you know 40 odd points more behind there Oh my god! Wait, hang on a second. Did they take? He took him out for Costa. This is before Chelsea had won the league, though, right? Or not? It was in game week thirty-seven. Yeah. So they. Yeah, actually, no, you're right. It's after they won the league. So it's after they always won the league, and he put Costa in. That is I think so. brave. Maybe it was the week before. That's oh, they're either way. Yeah, I thought that was funny. That's what that's what happens when you try and block sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Could backfire. Oh, that's one thing I would say. I've got pretty right this season. I think I, I've had Kane as a differential over people quite a lot, but it was a poor choice to begin with. He didn't really do that much. Mm. I think everyone had him for that double game, you know, where it was like Burnley at home and someone else. Yeah. yeah, and then everyone got rid because they were so pissed off with him. I kept him, um, and obviously he went crazy after that. So I, I did well there. The only problem is I also. Um, sold Ali as part of that which I've mentioned before which he then scored something like nine goals in five games or something ridiculous that really hurt me but yeah, yeah I actually have a similar story with Ali I I needed a midfielder around his price and um, I was on Fanny's Football Scout saying I needed a differential so I was looking at Mkhitaryan and someone said to me look and, and this is one of the things I said I'd do at the start of the season and this is one time I didn't do it but one guy said to me look Ali may have scored but he's still a differential right now and he's in good form, just get him. And I went Mkhitaryan, who scored once in six games, and Ali scored every game for like six <laughs> or seven. So that yeah, was a that's... big mistake. I'd love to know where I'd be if I got him. Um, so this is a similar question, right? Like, so this is kind of the opposite. This guy's chasing a guy with Kane, and he doesn't have Kane. Would you bring him in? And I guess the answer depends on how far behind you are. Because yeah. Kane could do damage if you don't bring him in. It completely depends how far away you are. You're right. Yeah. If he's if he's ninety point, well, he's not going to make up That's ninety points. Rashi, but if he's thirty point, twenty, thirty points behind, I wouldn't bring him in because you need to be different, don't you? If he's literally six or seven and he can make it up elsewhere, then I definitely would be bringing him in. Yeah, I think I agree on that because uh, he wants another four goals. So, and I think he could do it. I he's, just have to say as well, there's a guy in chat right now, right? It's called Thomas. Everyone knows him because he's a, he's he's the biggest Gabby Adini fanboy. You can imagine he had him capped him when he scored two goals, and he's been banging on about him in the streams ever since. <laughs> and I just want to—I just want to see what he wants to say now after four blanks and a penalty miss. <laughs> so Thomas, when you see that, he Snapchat me earlier actually asking me if I was streaming. So when when you hear that in a minute, the guy who's just asked about Martial, that guy. Yeah, thoughts on. I I said him. I know I mentioned him on the Scoutcast. I, I don't even know if he's going to play now. To be honest, I don't think he will. Um, and I just, I just think Man United is just too much of a punt at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'd steer well clear. I don't think he's worth a differential. Nah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be looking at Martial. I understand he's a differential, but he's a rubbish one. <laughs> yeah, Man United, I wouldn't touch him. Just wouldn't I, go I, there. I, I don't think Rooney's going to play. But if if, we, if they were both going to play, I think I'd even go Rooney ahead of him. Obviously, different positions though. So, um, yeah. what other questions we got here? Jesus to Kane. Okay. He's got, so, yeah, this is Matthew's question. So, Jesus to Kane, Ali to Kings, that's obviously to fund it. Uh, chasing 11 points versus a Kane captain. So, he's only got 11 points. Yeah, so I think maybe that could be worth it because if you know the other guy's going to captain Kane and you're only 11 points behind. Because I don't think Ali to King is that bad a transfer this week, to be honest. Mm. I think King could do damage. So he's taking Kane out for Jesus. Did I hear that no, right? No, he's or? taking Jesus and Ali out. I think this is it. And then he's bringing in Kane and King. He's, mm. trying, to, he's trying to make sure his rival can't get way ahead of him with Kane captain, basically. 
11 points in it. I think you've just got a bank on the fact if you want a minion that Kane's going to blank. If you say, if you just, I would go down the route of just hoping Kane's going to blank and captain someone else and just put it in God's hands. <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest, I know he scored four goals, but it's not like, I mean, I don't feel that he's suddenly hugely ahead of Sanchez anyway. I'm still probably going to captain Sanchez. Oh, really? Okay. I, I always had it in my mind before the game last night that I was going to captain Kane. I said that on the scout cast, didn't I, before they even played Thursday, I'd choose Kane against Hull. Um, I think it's just, for me, um, it's gone to that, it's gone back and it's pretty much confirmed now that Kane is pretty much the Aguero, the Robin Van, of old, mm-hmm. the Robin Van Persie, the Suarez. He's the closest thing we've got in the league. And I just think, in all situations where you're not sure really who to captain, you probably should just be going Kane. Now, that's how I kind of feel about it. I don't know if you feel the same, probably not, if you're going Sanchez, but the guy can just explode like no I mean so can Sanchez to be fair but I think he's more I mean he's more reliant on Arsenal playing well in general uh, Wenger being good to him playing with him in the right position I know it's working at the moment but with Kane he can get penalties as well and Sanchez doesn't have that in his locker and they can they can come at any point he does but maybe not if Giroud's on the pitch which he probably is going to be I don't know It's it's not as it's not as clear cut as Kane obviously yeah, I don't know. I, I had it on Sanchez, obviously, because Sanchez is a dummy really well, but it is a bit different now Kane's on. I don't know. I just... Uh, when I've been close between the... Stri- I said on the Skycast, when I've been close between the striker and the midfielder, I've always... Well, it's, it's been the striker or Sanchez. I've always gone Sanchez this season. Mm. And most of the time, it's done me all right. Yeah, and, and our midfielders generally outscoring defenders this uh, strikers this season aren't they I pretty... think so yeah I think um, Sanchez uh, can I have a look actually put it up on stream I mean obviously it... Sanchez is the top scorer so again I'd come back to the fact that if Arsenal are going to do anything you would have thought Sanchez will be involved get the baps probably a clean sheet point because Everton have just been so bad away from home stuff like that whereas Kane doesn't get any of that does he so I think you've, you've got a lot of avenues but the thing in the back of my mind is, is Kane going to be in the sort of form he was before? He's just going to be shooting at every opportunity to try and get that yeah. golden boot? Probably yes. So I reckon Kane, I reckon I've got to go Kane. How can you not go him? After the, like the thing is, to be fair as season? well, to back up your point, is there's no point in looking at points overall because Kane's missed quite a few games. I think yeah. I saw someone saying earlier that when it comes to like players in Europe this year, he's got like maybe second or third best goals per goals per game or something like that only behind like maybe Messi and Ronaldo oh wow or is he beating Messi is he, I think he's beating Suarez and someone else really this year okay now, now, I don't know if that's calendar year or season I think it might have been calendar year but either way wow that's pretty impressive uh, I did see a stat on Twitter as well that he's scored a ridiculous amount of goals and assists in, in a certain amount of games which doesn't help you because I can't even quote it now but I did see it on Twitter a little while ago and um yeah, I just like, like I said, I already said it before. He's the default captain, in my opinion. Especially if you're leading mini leagues, um, I think nearly all your leaders are going to be going Kane, aren't they? Every leader of every mini league is going to be Kane, Kane, aren't they? I would have thought so. I don't know. I'm leading. I'm thinking of Sanchez. Twenty-four <laughs> points. That does look nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead. I'm gonna mull over on that. I think. I mean, obviously, Sanchez has probably got the harder game, even though Spurs are away. <laughs> Mm. But what the Everton care right now? I don't know. The Kaku's off form. Don't really know if they've got much attacking threat, to be honest. That's the problem with Everton. They keep playing like three defensive midfielders, and then like Barkley kind of out wide, and Morelles, is, as we know, is so random wherever yeah. he turns. Most of the time he hogs the ball and, and stops service to Lukaku, if anything. I mean, with Tom Davies, um, Guare, and either Barry or whoever they throw in instead, Schneidlin or. It's just there's not enough spark in the middle there for me at Everton at the moment. They literally rely on Lukaku just turning up and going into god tier mode, or Barkley, and it just. And obviously way... for Spurs, it's it's not like saying that what they Everton care like how uh, they're out. Like, are they really going to turn up? To sp- I know some people have, said, have mentioned um, Newcastle beating Spurs five one, but I really it's not the same this year. I mean, last year. They could have won the league and they didn't. This year, I think they were just outclassed in the end by Chelsea over the season. Yeah, well, they didn't look like a team that was down and out against Leicester. No, um, not in the slightest. So, have, have Hull? Uh, sorry, talking about Hull scoring goals. Uh, 
I, oh, no, I don't think they're going to score goals. I just wonder if they're going to be asked to turn up and try and defend. I think they're going to be asked to turn up and try and defend. Yeah, I think that's a given. Maguire's <laughs> out, though, isn't he? They can't score goals. So what else, what other option have they got? <laughs> just turn but, up and just look around. Yeah. But whether they're going to stop Spurs, I don't know. Can't see it, personally. Oh, hang on. Thomas is back now. What did he say about Gabby Dini? Uh, he said he was going to bench you or something, I think. Hang on. I'm currently giving up on Manolo. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> Watch now as he bangs in a few against Stoke on my bench. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. I Lucas think you just have... and Morales. Oh, yeah. I think you just have to put that down to sad times if it happens. Yeah, just one of those things. <laughs> uh, are either of us, Andy or Luke, considering Sun? Uh, I'm not because I've got three Spurs. But I do think... If he starts, we, uh, he could be very good. I, I take it you're not really considering Sonny either, though. Um, I think he's great. I think uh, if he starts, he will get points. Um, he probably will start, but um, my midfield, I'm happy with everyone in my midfield. It would just be like trading one good player for another yeah. good player. It's just Same like, way. yeah, so uh, no, basically. <laughs> that's why That's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm like, not if it was a maybe if there's more games to go, I'd be more into Hazard to Coutinho, but just because it's one game week and I'm ha- kind of happy with Hazard if he starts, that's why I'm not super into that move. <laughs> Played a Mesmer and Guild Wars, nice. You got the first Guild Wars, yeah. The first Guild Wars, I used to play that ridiculous amount, and um, I, I thought it was a clever play on words because I was a uh, I used to play a Mesmer and you had to disable the enemy casters so I called myself disable and it just stuck from there nice. um, so yeah that's a little bit of my geek past out in the out in the open field. I don't know why I play games it's all good still do play too much games um, I, I still play Pokemon Go beat that <laughs> uh, no I can't beat that <laughs> uh, start Davies says Ben Davies over Monreal or Yoshida I guess I guess Yoshida well, I'm actually playing. I'm right now. I'm playing one of my Southampton defenders, Stevens or Yoshida, ahead of Davies. Really? Okay. People all seem to think that's a mistake, and I guess if Hull aren't going to score, maybe it is. Oh, I'm playing Davies over um, Stevens. Hmm. I just, I mean, Davies has thrown in a couple of assists of late as well. Yeah, I know. And like in both games, like he wasn't, or at least against Leicester, wasn't too far away from the clean sheet as well. It would have been a big score. He's actually my fifth highest scoring player this week. Uh, this week. Yeah. Oh, I right, mean, so now I'm going to switch him in. Everyone keeps saying. Oh, yeah. A mistake. I would. Saints just don't look that good. I think they could. I mean, everyone just thinks they'll beat Stoke, and Stoke are pretty awful. But they're also random, so they could. Yeah. I think they could score. <laughs> actually, a few. I don't know if anyone's actually really asked it yet, but I know. A few people have asked me on Twitter, if you had Yoshida and Stevens and you were going to play one, which one would you play? Like for me, I especially in the double game week, I favoured Yoshida because of his goal threat. But when I watched the Man United game, Stevens was almost... It's, it felt like he was... Any time a corner came in, at some point, whether it was the first header or whether it was getting on the back post, he would always get a touch. And he's better for bonus. So for me, I would play Stevens, I think, now. Yeah, I'd probably go with that as well. Stevens has been getting better bonus, so it makes sense. The goal, you can't really predict. They've both yeah. got similar threat from corners, and you're just unlucky if you get that wrong if it happens. So, yeah, I'd go for the bonus player. There was there was a little part of me, I'll be honest, that was sad when Stevens crossed the ball in. Oh, yeah. And it was going to Yoshida, and Phil Jones popped up. I was like, would it be the worst thing if it went in? I mean, we're not going to win anything anyway. No. Uh, didn't Stevens almost score? I wasn't watching. I was listening on the radio. I can't remember what game it was, but he should have scored or something. I think against United, was... he had a he had a time a shot where it, it basically I think it bounced on the floor and he just had to volley it in like he was six yards out maybe. Oh god! And he just sliced it. It went like towards the corner flag area. Oh, gutting. Not good. Yeah. 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 United fan. So Rash said he was a United fan. He was sad too. I was actually uh, two seasons ago. I was at Old Trafford under Van Gaal when we were doing shite. And we are playing Spurs and we won 3 0. And there was a little. I had Rose and Kane back then. And there was a, there was a time Rose passed the ball through to Kane. I thought it wouldn't be the worst thing if we won 3 1 instead of 3 0. 
<laughs> I would never, I would never wish Man United to lose, but you always want the result to uh, to kind of go both ways, so United win and you get yeah. the FBL. My my support for Man United, and this is really bad, has massively dwindled over the past years. And I know people will say that's glory, glory supporting, but basically <laughs> since Fergie left. It's been hard watching them. It's been really hard. And as fantasy has gradually taken over, it's like, I've just, yes, I support them. But if I've got fantasy players playing against them, I will support those fantasy players. I'm that, I'm, I'm that bad now. I will literally cheer on a player to score against my team. That is dreadful, not isn't it? not quite got that bad just yet. <laughs> just yet. <laughs> um, all right, that's that. Uh, Andy or, or Luke, best triple captain differential option for you. Well... <laughs> That's basically the same as best captain option, really, because if you ain't using it this week, when are you using it? Um, I mean, we've, I think we've already discussed that, really, like Kane, I guess. If we think Wait. Kane's the best captain, he's the best triple captain, surely. Didn't he say differential captain, though? If you go oh, up. differential, okay. Yeah, I, I honestly think the best differential captain is Coutinho. I know yeah. quite a lot of people are looking to bring him in and stuff, but um, in terms of him being captained and outside of our little bubble... Um, exactly. I, would, I wouldn't have thought many people would do that. I mean, I looked at the top 10K stats for last week, and he was only owned by 3.6%. Um, mm. I'm just going to check now, because he has been brought in by quite a few, and obviously we don't know like, who's, what, like, what rank these people who are bringing them in are. But let's have a look. So transfers in this week. 168,000 people have brought him in. That's got to mm. be quite a high percentage in the top 10K, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, but he's going to probably go from 3.6% to like 30 or 40, maybe even more in the top 10k, I'd say. Yeah, but no, will anyone be triple captain? Maybe a few no. are chasing, but not many. I wouldn't no, have thought no, there's no, many actually, triple... Sorry. I, don't, I wouldn't even have thought there's that many triple captain chips left. Does anyone know? Yeah. Does it... Well, yeah, for no, live people. Oh, what are you drinking? Uh, Aspel. Oh, nice. Oh, I should have got a beer. Oh, we'll stick for water now. Can I talk about the Let's Talk FPL League? Yeah, I'll quickly talk about that because I'm up to 13th now. Well, did anyone score better than me? 190. Oh, someone got 194. A couple of people are 194. Yeah, so I'm 13th now. Felix, who was leading for ages, is 6th. Lars is top. I don't know if. I don't recognise that name, so I don't know if he's in the chat or if he's under a different name. But 1095, he's only 10 points clear, so. We'll see. I'm gonna. I'll do. I'll probably do another stream before the season's uh, just after the season's out, just to wrap it up. So we'll talk about it then. But it looks pretty close at the top. I'm thirty points behind. Probably not gonna win with my boring play style this week. But we'll see. Any thoughts on the FPL Cup? Oh, uh, not really. <laughs> like I wouldn't even know who's playing in it to be honest. It's something that we. Uh, we get put in and never win because you go out to some some what's it casual or someone that's not playing oh there's Lars he just said evening how's it going Lars are you confident you can win the league I'm sure he is okay you're 8% blanking. sorry go on no you're blanking out again for me don't worry <laughs> okay I was chatting for a lot then that's probably why uh, 8% of the top 10k have triple captain. Okay, not a great deal then. Most of them are probably going to put out on Kane and Sanchez, like we said, I guess. Uh, what's your highlight of the FPL season? This week, I guess. Look, okay, you still not hear me. Still can't hear me. For me, I, it has to be this week. I know, like, it kind of sucks having to wait until until right at the end for it but uh, yeah let me just see if we can get um, Luke here we better can you hear me? yeah I can hear you but it's like uh, it's like you're lagging massively I don't know if it's uh, just connection or something and it's okay. like um, you sort of cut off halfway through maybe I was just chatting too much I'll shut up more <laughs> I don't think it's that I, I don't know it's a uh, yeah it's alright we'll make do alright cool so uh, yeah Fozzie is saying what's the highlight of this season and I said it's probably as boring as it is it's got to be this week hasn't it 
I would say so. Um, for me, definitely. <laughs> what did you jump? You were telling me, I can't remember what it was now. What did you jump up in rank? I went, um, let's go back to my history. It's something insane. Well, I think it is. Um, okay, so I do it from the point of wildcard, I guess, because that's when it's probably most important. So 100, I was 140,000 in game week 35. I jumped up to 82,000 uh, in game week 36, and then 25,000 by the end of this double game week. So I've jumped up in two weeks, 115, is that? 115,000. Yeah. I had a game week one, a game week rank of uh, 1,403. Jesus, uh, I thought mine was good. Um, mine was just inside the top 5k game week rank. Yeah. So I mean, for me, that's that's got to be my highlight, right? Uh, I'm so annoyed at obviously that Gabardini penny, as we've already said, to get me higher. But ever that happens for a lot of people. But the other annoying thing for me is I had Trippier and uh, Davies, and obviously that Wayne Rooney goal killed my double clean sheet. And then to add to that, Trippier then got injured and went off the pitch, yeah. and I thought, oh great, he's not going to play next week, and he didn't. Um, so that really, really hurt me. That one rain. That's another reason for me to hate Wayne Rooney. Killed me uh, even getting a bigger score, but I I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, I think so, like obviously 192 points is also like the, I the week I really liked beyond that was probably game week 28, so that was where the blanks were. Ah, I right. took a 16 point hit, and I I got a 10k game week rank, and I went from 123k to 73k, and I got king in. Wow, so that's when he got 18 points. I suppose the other, the couple other things that stick. I think Sun got eighteen or nineteen points that I had in my team recently, and yeah. Lukaku captain for four goals. See, that's one of those times where I didn't pick the obvious captain and it hurt me. I didn't yeah. go with Lukaku that time. Um, let me go back. What week was that that, that happened in? The Lukaku one. Yeah. Uh, probably game twenty-four. I got ninety-three that week. Oh yeah, it is bang on. Yeah. Because I like at three o'clock on a Saturday, I'm gonna take my little boy to football. So I was like, check. I always check. My, I'm trying to watch him and check my phone at the same time. I just kept popping up. Lukaku goal. Lukaku goal. It was, it was great. <laughs> yeah. See, I I had him in my team and I captain Ericsson, who got three points, so went up six with the captain. Obviously, that that so that's like a shocker. But I didn't do that bad overall because I had seventy three points, so I still kind of stuck with it. So that's kind of what my point. Yeah. Yes, I could have absolutely smashed it with a car but by going with the differential and in this case it was a terrible differential it's still not that bad of a loss so when you get them right it kind of feels great it kind of means you play tortoise and hare in leagues quite a lot with me yeah. I, I, I go significantly down or significantly up most of the time which I like <laughs> instead of steady yeah yeah I don't know what I'm going to do because like last year I had a shocker like, I was the same as you I think did you say you never got Vardy in I think I had him. Don't you remember? I had Vardy game week one. Do you remember? I was the only one who did it, and he scored because you twi you tweeted me saying, "Wow, Vardy scored game week one. That was a great call, or whatever." And then I wild carded him out in game week two <laughs> or three, um, which was the biggest error probably of my fantasy career. Because <laughs> I, I just think when I play, like I'm, no, I'm never going to not take hits, so I could just have an awful season next year. I don't think I really care. Well, last season was my worst season. Ever since playing the game properly, um, last season was not my worst, but my worst season, like I wasn't hardly paying attention to it, like working nights and stuff. But uh, yeah, last year was still pretty bad, ninety two k. I don't know. We'll see next season. I'll kind of. Uh, how do you like? I was going to say to you, how do you feel like when the season ends? Because I, I'm kind of looking forward to the break, but in about a week, I'm going to wish there was fantasy football. I, I don't mind the break at all, but the thing that I really miss is just as soon as those price lists comes out, as soon as that comes out, for me, that is actually my favourite part, is constructing yeah. a team, all the possibility. I know that sounds crazy, but maybe other people are like that. But my favourite part is just messing around, waiting for the start of the season, trying to work out who I can get. And it, it's the, I don't know why we do it, but so much changes in that period that your team will change so much depending on who's been every signed day, and who gets not injured every week to week yeah it's completely pointless but i will sit there and do it again and it will still be my favorite part of it <laughs> it's because it's because there's in your head you've picked the best team 
And like you've got nothing else to base it on apart from the previous season and fixtures. So you just it's <laughs> the hope. It's the hope that this time you've picked the team because I never start off well. I'm always like outside the top 500k or whatever. Yeah, time. I'm never one of those people that just gets within the top 10k in the first week and just kind of stays there. No, I don't think I have in FPL, but I have been in Sky. I was uh, rank one in the world after two weeks once, which is, is crazy. Is that you finished fourth? Is it fourth? No, no. Yeah, I did finish fourth, but it wasn't the same season. I didn't oh. do as well then on that one. I drew, I from that point. In fact, I remember exactly when it was. It was when Zeko scored four goals, um, which was about week three or four into a season. I, it was overnight, so Saturday to Sunday because it updated. So Saturday night, I was ranked one in the world. The next day, Sunday, Man City played and Zeko scored four goals and I didn't have him any. I just, from that point, I never got back again because someone, believe it or not, had Zeko as captain, obviously. It must have been Aguero out. <laughs> There's always someone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I, was that like three seasons ago, something like that? I think it was more than that. Probably more. I mean, is that, how long has Zeko been gone? Well, I was saying because three seasons ago, I had him. And he got, it was, he was playing Leicester at home, I think, and he got injured in the warmer hole. I was really annoyed. But the next week, I bought in Harry Kane, who was like six million at the time. And I, I had him way before everyone else. So it actually worked out really well. That's all I remember is Zacho, to be honest, getting injured in the warm up. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, I remember that. That hurt me. I, re- I did that as well. Uh, they're saying in the chat there's Zeko four goals away to Spurs. That was probably it. I can't I can't remember. That probably was it. Did he ever score four goals another time? Probably not. Probably <laughs> so, not, yeah, it must. Yeah. Yeah. He was captain in Zeko against Spurs. Well, I guess Spurs weren't the same Spurs, were they, back then? Not not bad, but not anywhere near this. True. Level. Zeko's having a blinder this season, apparently, I think. So I, so I see here. I've not seen him play. Yeah, I, I, a lot of my knowledge of football outside of the Premier League comes down to FIFA, and I know he's I, he's had a few like inform cards, I think. Mm. So, yeah, I think he's doing all right. Um, when does the next season of FPL start? When the season there? Uh, First fixture starts. I don't know. It's usually in July sometime that it comes comes up. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Fozzy, do you have any thought? This is you, Luke, uh, about chips that should be introduced or changes to the chips. If it was discussed up, a lot, if it was up to me, I would scrap them all. Yeah, I, I cannot completely understand from their point of view why they're in the game and to try and keep people interested and even from sort of fantasy football scout kind of head putting that on it's a good thing because it's more to talk about it's more to tactically plan yada 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 but I just I think it just increases the luck factor in the game so much I mean the triple captain thing you can go from Kane this week or Sanchez to nothing and it's I don't know it just kind of cheapens it for me it just seems a bit gimmicky I I don't know I, I would prefer it just to be old fashioned but if they're, they're not going to go away, that's the bottom line. I can't see them ever. Can you see them ever being taken out? I certainly can't, no. Probably not. I mean, it's, it feels... I don't know. I don't have the back-end data or whatever. It feels like there's more active teams at this point than ever. Now, whether that's chips or not, I don't know. Mm. But if it coincides with the chips, then... Yeah. I, say, I, I don't have a problem with them staying. But at the same time, if they went, I wouldn't miss them either. No. I mean, because now we plan... The problem is, for all the... I think... Um, I think Trigger Lips did an article on it recently, if anyone's seen it. Did you see that article where he kind of says that... No. Uh, well, essentially what he's saying is the, the, the reason why they've put these chips in, as far as we can tell, is to, like you say, keep people active, um, to have a bit more fun, um, and to mean that there's a bit more luck involved so that you know your more casual player could hit a triple captain and be back in the game. He could, be, he could suddenly jump back up the mini league, stuff like that. But really what's all that's happened is that you know, us pros, if you want to call it that, or saddos, or people hardcore, whatever you want to call us, that are up to it all the time, have um, sort of worked a way to utilise these with the double game weeks and the wildcard, you know, case last week, and we've used them to our advantage. And it kind of then bottlenecks people, it bottlenecks us all into doing the same thing. I mean, how, you only have to go down the uh, mods and cons league, and there's only one person in the whole league who didn't bench boost this week, yeah. and that, and I think he's gave up. He's bottom of the league. Okay. <laughs> So it bottlenecks you into picking a similar team, um, having the similar players, because obviously in that week there's going to be very similar players that do well, and it kind of defeats the objects of the chips, which is to have a bit of variety and have a bit of fun with them. I think I think if they're going to keep them, they need to give us three more uh, for the first half of the season and just mirror the wild card. 
Yeah, that, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I know the all-out attack thing could come in handy a few times, but I do think that it's almost like I'd like to use that retrospectively. Uh, like, if they could somehow say, oh, do you know what? <laughs> I, uh, my defender got me zero points there, and one of my players did really well on the bench. Can I use my AOA card and activate it afterwards? I think that would be more useful, because you can never tell beforehand. If you So many times you could do it, and your defender scores points, and your midfielder does nothing. And yeah. you just... Uh, I think I mentioned before uh, that one chip I was interested in that they could bring in would be something like best captain. So you click best captain and yeah. uh, it, uh, afterwards it, it auto selects. So in this double game week, for example, if you chose the best captain chip, it would have put it on Kane after the double game week's finished because he's in your team. Not a player that's not in your team. It would have to be a player in your team. So who got the most points? Right, he was your captain. Well done. That's even that's even worse than triple captain because then you, you just save it for the double game week and you guarantee lots of points. Yeah, that's true. At least with triple captain, you've got to make a choice. So I think if you add that, because like there's always that defender that does ridiculous. Like, Aspel quite got you 20 points. Now, obviously, Sanchez and Kane beat that, but there's always a chance they might not. And then you get Aspel quite a captain like, without having to do anything apart from click a button. I, I yeah. Know. I know, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, Fozzie's saying their best captain would just be used in the doubles, though. But what, what chips wouldn't be used in the doubles? I, I no, think... I agree. Like, all chips right now, the way they do it, are used in doubles, but. Apart from all that attack, of course, but um, yeah, I just think that one like it just makes it even easier. That takes even. I suppose it takes the luck. No, that puts the luck up then. I guess. Um, it, yeah, but it's yeah. it's the same for everyone. That's the difference with the triple captain. You can get that wrong. I suppose it's still not because you could have different players. I don't know. I'm talking about people asking like <laughs> Carl, like you're saying. Although that's not his name, Carl Burke. I always say that. Uh, how about a budget chip where it lets you buy a player for one million cheaper? But I just. I don't see where that value is added with that kind of chip. Like, why? Does, how does that make the game better? I just, I just don't think it does. Like, I, I don't think they would need to add any more, personally. But um, I, I think they will as time goes on, because they're every. You know what it's like in any company. If FPL is a company, there always a new guy comes in. Always there's, a, how can we improve this game? Everyone's trying to continuously improve. Everyone's got different ideas. There's no way it will stay stationary. Things will come in eventually. Um, yeah, I, don't, a, I don't have a problem with changes, but I think with FPL they need to be subtle because it's, I think it's so popular because it's so simple. Like people are asking in the chat, like, "Don't know what you think about this?" Is adding more stats in for points, so essentially putting a point scoring system in that would let defensive midfielders become a choice. Yeah, well, obviously they've got that in Sky, haven't they? Yeah. So I so I like that. Um, the more variety you can get in the game, which has got to be their aim as well, the more people who are viable options, the better for everyone, right? So whether that means doing that, giving points for tackles or passes completed or anything like that, that's one way. I think other people have mentioned before clean sheet points for defensive midfielders, things yeah. like that. Um, <sighs> again, the only, the only thing with that is, so there's a difference. Like If they give players... Uh, points and tackles or whatever then that makes a bigger pool of players available like I think in Sky players like Henderson and Ramsey are usually pretty good because they tackle as well as go forward or whatever mm. so that would make a bigger pool of players available without having to change their positions but if you give defensive midfielders clean sheets then you have to make another section for them so you'd have to have defenders mids defensive mids and forwards yeah and I, I think... think that then makes the pool of defensive mids very small that's true. I think Mark talked about it a long time ago. He's always been an advocate for this attacking midfield slot in some way that you have to. Because the, th the thing is, and we see it every year, we was talked about it a bit on the Scoutcast, the striker pool seems to decline every single season and the midfielder options, whether it's in my head or not, seem to just go up all the time. Well, they don't decrease, that's for sure. Yeah, they don't, they don't decrease. That's a better way of putting it. And they... And midfielders can score just as well as strikers. Um, they pretty much are strikers in a lot of cases. I mean, Ali is in all but name pretty much, yeah. isn't he? Um, you know, Sanchez, would you say, is or not. Hazard in the past has probably been on that borderline as well. You could say that, I mean, you could say they play the same position. I know Sanchez is occasionally up front this season, but before that, they pretty much played inside forward on the left side. And then. Yeah, pretty, you're, you're basically saying, like, there's uh, no post on. FS like Wakey he always says that he says a player's got a position on like TV when you see like you see the graphic at the start but when you start looking at heat maps it's completely different yeah and I just think 
they may want to address that balance by moving your Sanchez's of this world to your forwards, and it gives you more of a problem. Then you can't have all the best options. I mean, we wouldn't. People would say you miss them in midfield or whatever, but there's so many midfield options you would open up more options to you. And there's so many players I want to take a punt on all the time, and I just think, well, I can't because I have to have Sanchez, Hazard, people like that. And if, it, if there was a bigger pool of forwards, I think you'd have a lot more variety. Because, I mean, who's not going to have Kane and Jesus for next season? I know it's price dependent, but right now, everyone in their head is thinking, yeah. I'm going to have Kane, I'm going to have Jesus, right? Am I the only one thinking that? Yeah, no, pretty much. Unless, like, someone like Sanchez gets reclassified as a forward, or Man United by Griezmann, which is not going to happen. But, yeah, I think they're the two right now. For it, sure. Yeah, and although it, it never works out like that, you know, one of them may be injured or do poorly or whatever, but... The fact that there's only two stri- strikers we're pretty much all going to be thinking of already worries me. <laughs> I would prefer that if you send said Sanchez is now a forward, Hazard is now a forward, Ali is now a forward, but slightly less price or whatever, you'd have you'd have things to think about. Yeah, no, I agree. Because like right now, I wouldn't be able to, of course I'd be looking at Sanchez, Hazard, De Bruyne, but there's no one I'd say yeah, definitely my team would have to wait. Whereas strikers, mm. definitely. Uh, I mean, if you had Kane at, say, say he's 12, 12 and a half obviously. or 12, yeah, and then you've got Ali at, like, 10 and a half as a striker, you, you would have a, a not, you know, you'd have something to think about there. Yeah, be interesting to see what they do. I, I don't know. I don't know how quickly... I mean, that kind of thing, they can't really implement slowly. You either do it or you don't. Mm-hmm. And then you tweak it as needed. But, uh, I don't know. We'll, we will see. A um, uh, question about diving... Might leave that on. For, uh, well, I think you already said it. They should just use video evidence, right? They should just have video refs. Did you say that? You mean? For the diving? Yeah. Um, I understand they're trying to take diving out of the game. Everyone's for that, surely. But how does it benefit the team that it's just happened to? Surely that's the most important thing. The team that it's just happened to, they don't care if he gets banned for two games after that. They've just lost the game. I think they need video refs at the time. I think it's the only way it's going to solve it. And there's... I mean, I, I guess the whole, I guess their kind of thing is that it's a deterrent. It's supposed to be a deterrent, but if it if it doesn't deter him from doing it, and like you say, it screws that team, then what do they, what do they care if he's then banned for the next two? Does it, if, yeah, I think they need to bring in video rest to be honest. But um, I guess it's just a deterrent. The the reason that the uh, niche has asked this is he's saying, do you think FPL will revisit matches? And they definitely won't. They're not gonna. They will only give points for what happens in the match. doesn't matter what happens after. It's the same with goals and assists and stuff now. They don't take points off people who get goals taken away from them through the no. uh, whatever the panel's called. So I don't think uh, I don't think anything's going to change FBL-wise. To be no, but then, but then that's another point someone made before, I think. Uh, so if you, if you dive in a game, right, and the referee notices it, um, He's going to give you a yellow card as per it stands at the moment, right? If you dive, you get a yellow card. Yeah. So if you if you know, get noticed diving, you get given a yellow card. If you don't get noticed diving, you get a red card essentially, but after the game, which then bans <laughs> you for two. Surely that has to be a red card at that point of diving. And then how can you be sure if you haven't got video refs? They'd never give them out because they'd be just absolutely you know, chastised if they got it wrong. And then you'd almost get to the point where it would depend on your position, like if you're winning in the game by a lot of goals or not. Say you're winning 4-1 and you know you've just dived. You can't help it. You're a player. You're in the box. It's your instinct to dive. You're just a cheater. I'd almost go straight to the ref and go, I just dived then. I just dived. Give me a yellow card because it doesn't matter. Um, You'd literally get your yellow card and everyone would carry on. And then if you're in that same position, you're only winning by, you know, you're drawing and you need the goal, you wouldn't put your hands up and you just take the two-game ban. Uh, plus, there are times like it doesn't happen. I mean, a lot of the times we know when a player's dive, but sometimes like they will just jump out the way because they don't want to get hurt, and it mm. looks like they've dived. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And and who's to stop? I think I mentioned it just half in jest, but if there's something to be exploited there, someone can do it. Why not send on some kid you don't care if he gets banned <laughs> for two matches for for the last ten minutes, saying, "Look, dive in the box. Whatever you're going to do, get us a yeah, penalty. Yeah. Who cares? If we don't play for two games. He, he wasn't going to play anyway, sort of thing." Yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be interesting to see how it works next year. I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to be that much of a deterrent, to be honest. Not to the likes of like Zaha and Ashley Young. Although I don't know how many games Ashley Young is going to get. Fraser, um, Fraser Forster, uh, not Fraser Forster. Ryan Fraser. Oh yeah, for Bournemouth. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Hazard or Ali? Actually, not getting many questions on game week thirty-eight, and uh, which is surprising. Hazard to Ali? Oh, Hazard or Ali to Coutinho? We kind of answered that earlier. I think we. I think you said Ali, right? Out of the two, or only if you really think Hazard's going to start. Yeah, the bottom line is we don't know who's going to start, but I think my gut would say to take Ali out because Ericsson got dropped the game before, so now it might be Ali's turn where it was Hazard. I've literally got no idea. Yeah, fair enough. I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm really tempted to keep Hazard, so it'll probably be Ali for me, um, although I'm probably going to keep both. Uh, has, okay. Hazard and Gabbiadini... Oh, Jesus. Hazard, yeah, you might be able to see it from Super Tiger. Hazard and Gabi, Gabbiadini for Coutinho and Giroud or Sturridge and Fabregas. It's got to be Coutinho and Giroud, right? Um, well, Coutinho's definitely going to play, right? Unless he's got injured in training. And, and probably going to play. I would say Giroud is a lot higher chance than even Sturridge. So, yeah, it's got to be that one. Easy. There you go, Super Tiger. Job done. Kane or Sanchez captain. Uh, yeah, both said it already. Luke's on Kane. I am currently on Sanchez, but he's almost taught me into just swapping it to Kane now. Uh, we'll decide <laughs> that later. Oh yeah, how are the polls? Uh, I'll check check them out in two minutes. If for anyone that's like just started watching, just click the top right hand corner, click the little eye, and vote on the polls, and I'll uh, I'll read them out in a sec. We can see where we're at. Awesome. Yeah, I'll get them up in a minute. Any other Liverpool assets, Matip? Yeah, you like him, don't you? This week, Mister Matip. Matip. Yeah, I just I I can't see Middlesbrough scoring. I know it's Liverpool and they're dodgy at set pieces, so they could concede. Um, but so could anyone. Goals go crazy at the end of the season, and Matip just looks a threat. In a, who did they play? It was four nil. Whoever it was, um, was West it Watford? Ham. Was it West Ham? That's who it was. Yeah, I don't know if anyone watched that game, but Matip got on the end of probably about three corners, one of which he should have scored. He headed it down and it came up into the bar. Uh, and just watching him, he looked really annoyed at the fact he hadn't scored. And I just thought, you know what? He's he's really going to try and go for a goal. And I, there is a sneaky chance he might get one. I think. Yeah, I think he had quite a good record for goals. Uh, I don't know if I'm making that up, but he, I think he did before he came to the Premier League. Okay, then. So that, so I guess behind Coutinho, he'd be the other Liverpool asset to look at. Then I'm not really to be honest looking at. It. I know, as was saying on the Scoutcast about Lallana, I'm not so sure about that. Um, he's just not done anything. He's a favourite, isn't he? So he likes him. Aguero was a differential. Yeah, it depends who you're bringing him in for, though. Really, I don't think I'll be taking hits to bring Aguero in personally. I don't know what you think. You can straight nah. swap, maybe, but then who are you straight swapping for? Kane? Doesn't uh, doesn't seem worth it to me. If someone who might not even start. If we were probably will, but... If, if we were talking old school uh, Aguero before Pep come, then I would say a hit to get Aguero in at any point where people don't have him is probably a good idea, but... Uh, how, how many times has he scored more than one goal? Well, here we go. So... Uh, I don't know if he has, actually. I'll have a look in a sec. Um, so the guy that's asking, Eddie, he's saying he's taking Costa out for him. He's going to triple up with Jesus, Aguero, and Sané. Wow. That is ballsy. That's, that's ballsy, yeah. I don't know. Now, now he said that, I kind of like it. But I do think Costa's going to play and send them to rubbish, so... Yeah. I'm taking him out. Uh, this is the thing. There could be goals in all the games. You could just be trading one for another. But... Watford, shocking. Man City could go crazy. Three and what? All eggs in one basket. <laughs> go for it, mate, if you feel it. Um, Watford are rubbish. No defenders. No, I think uh, what's his name? Uh, Prodel's now suspended as well, isn't he? So yeah, yeah. Uh, he's actually um, he's actually scored twice, four times, but not since game week thirteen. Stoke mm. away, Swansea away, West Brom away. And Burnley away, so double figure hauls in four away games, no home games, and it's away against Watford. Maybe maybe Eddie is has seen something none of us are even looking at. I bet a couple of those at least were probably with pens as well. Do we probably, know for yeah. sure that he's gonna have pens? Now that oh, Jesus not if Yaya plays. Oh actually yeah, if Jesus And Jesus took one, didn't he? And uh so and he took I... it off Yaya, so you'd think he's now number one, I guess. Well 
Yeah, exactly. And didn't Yaya take it off of Aguero because he was missing them? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We took so, over from him. I don't know if that happened in the game or was decided before. But I think the difference was... I think I think Yaya just stepped up. I, I don't think he took it off Aguero. Whereas in the, in the Leicester game, Yaya went to get the ball. And the next thing I saw, Jesus was up there. So I don't know what was said there. Or whether it's... I don't know whether Yaya was just collecting the ball for him or something. But I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, he might not even be on penalties now, so... Yeah, so then if those four games, I'd expect... I mean, I've not looked at them, but I'd imagine at least one or two of them were probably with a pen involved. So, yeah, I mean, it's not great for Aguero. Um, uh, King is captain. Now Hooth and Morgan are unavailable. Do you know what? I, I won't be captain in King again, but... How can I argue against someone that just scores every single game, pretty much? I mean, I think there's better captain options this week. I don't know if... Well, he's, he has scored a hat-trick before. I just... You know, I don't know. I, I'm not going to captain King ahead of Alios, uh, ahead of Kane and Sanchez. Do you own him? Do you own King? I've, I've got him, yeah. I, I think it always comes down to the fact that it's, it's Bournemouth and they could just randomly turn in a shocker. So you're never that confident even though he has absolutely smashed it so kind of um it probably doesn't make sense but it's just almost instinctive you like to captain players where the team is going to see a lot of the ball or i do like spurs are going to see a lot of the ball city are going to see a lot of the ball they're going to dominate the game you would have thought and with bournemouth you can't say for sure that they will dominate the game <laughs> so it's yeah. like yeah that's that's my thinking on it but there we go. i mean if if you're chasing maybe and you're basically betting on the big hitters not doing well. It could be worth a punt, but I'd want to be pretty far behind to be captain and king. I think. Mm. Uh, what what does or what do we think of Johnny's home team theory with City and Spurs free scoring? I mean, the, the stats are there, but like it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen again. Um, but I think there are personally, I think there are some. You know, you've got Liverpool and. Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea are all at home. So, yeah, they probably will score a load of goals. But I don't think that... I think Spurs are going to do fine. And I think City are going to do fine, to be honest. I, mean, I haven't looked at all the results personally from the previous seasons. You know, who who had stuff to play for, who was missing, etc. I just think City and Spurs have still got stuff to play for. They're much better than their opposition. Hull are relegated. Watford are missing players. So, I don't know what you think. Yeah. I wouldn't be not playing my City and Spurs players, that's for sure. I, uh, like you say, the stats are there, so it's hard to argue with. But what were those fixtures? I don't know. Like, you could have been loads of good teams at home on the final day. Could have been more so. Um, again, who who was playing for what? And another, I mean, the, how does the past? How does the past last day of the season dictate what's going to happen? This I just can't see it. What really is the link? The only thing that I could say for sure is that. Teams at home, in front of their home fans, are going to want to put onto a display. Yeah, That's as far as it goes, season. as far as I can tell. Yeah. Anything else beyond that. I mean, Watford are going to want to put on a show for their fans. They're at home. Um, but the problem is they're absolute shite. <laughs> so, I always so. think that sometimes. You know, like, it was like Middlesbrough. And I, I've probably said this myself because it's a cliche. But um, you'll have, like, Middlesbrough. And they'll be trying to get clean sheets. And they'll be drawing games. And they won't be scoring enough goals. And then people will say... Well, they're going to go in now and they're going to be wanting to score goals. And you think, yeah, but they're shit. They can't score goals. It doesn't matter how much they want to score goals. They can't. And exactly. I just think, like, yes, it's what you said. Watford, I'm sure they're going to want to put on a show, but are they capable? I'm not so sure myself. Especially yeah. against City. I, just, I said a few weeks ago they're going to blow a team away, and they did that against Palace. And I think mm. they've been doing really well since. I think Pep's got them playing the, probably the way he wants them to play. He's got his boy back now. I don't know. I, I'm personally just going to play the players I got. I'm not really looking at the home team because I don't really want to change most of my players anyway. Mm. So I'm I'm quite happy. But yeah, if you haven't got players like Coutinho, then they're looking good and they're at home. So best of both worlds, I suppose. Uh, you might go Ken Captain. Yeah. Apart from Spurs getting thumped by Newcastle was a major shot. Yeah. Well, like I we said that I said that about that earlier. I, I just think. Last season was different to this one when it comes to Spurs. They don't look completely deflated. Uh, Sunderland, the injury ravaged according to Moyes. Could Chelsea win 8-0, triple Chelsea? That is basically what I'm worried about. 
I, I, 8 0 sounds like a lot, but that's why I don't want to get rid of Hazard. I just feel like if, if any team's going to smash someone, it's going to be Chelsea with a full strength team. And again, if I was chasing, I don't know if you've ever captained the defender, but I'd be very tempted by Alonso captain. I just caught the end of that because it's doing that silly lag thing again, which was Alonso captain. And yeah, I can't argue with it. The guy's an absolute beast and he's killed me all season. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, <laughs> I, I basically, there was a question in there about whether Chelsea are going to smash Sunderland because of how injury ravaged Sunderland are. Um, uh, well, on paper, you'd say yes at any given moment. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that could be 8 0. It could be. But. Who's he going to play? We don't know. Um, I think I mentioned it again on the scout cross with Alonso. I know he's not played for something like, uh, you know, he didn't play the last game. But he's so key to how they play. That left wing back role is pretty much the only one who can do it as well as he can do it. Yeah. He's definitely going to play in the final. I don't think that's up for debate. So why risk him at home to Sunderland? Why risk him? <laughs> he could get injured. And then that'll be that. So I think he will play. I just think there's a chance that... Uh, he doesn't. Yeah, there's a chance because Conte might think, why am I going to risk him against Sunderland? Who cares if we even lose but, <laughs> at the end of the day? But he, they'll probably win anyway. That's the, the captain thing was actually my question because I just I think if he does play, he's just he's going to not be out of their box for most of the game, I reckon. But he does that against pretty much any team, so why not do it against uh, Sunderland? Well, Scott, I mean, that's one of the reasons I wanted um, Costa on my team this week because I just worry that Chelsea are going to smash him, but... I'm not taking out Kane or Jesus, so I just have to hope for the best. Yeah. Would you bring in William for Ali? No, I don't think so. That, that's just that's just the same as Hazard. Like if Hazard doesn't play, I'm sure it'll be William that does, but we don't know. Mm. I mean, there's a lag on my connection, do you? I, I think I think it is. I've not had any on mine. Maybe it's just the stress of having me on there yeah. as well. Having you on and streaming, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it's only, it's only occasionally it's happening. I can hear you fine now. It's like every five minutes it will start happening. So don't worry about it. It's fine. If I go silent, I'm not being, I'm not that stupid. Anyone who's watching, it's just uh, the lag, <laughs> honestly. Someone said to me earlier they thought you were maybe uh, just trying to wind me up, and actually you can hear everything. You're just <laughs> making me panic. I wouldn't do that to you, Andy. I um. Yeah, to be fair, considering this is the first time I've had anyone but me on, I think. Uh, I think it's been pretty smooth so far. Still plenty of time. Um, I'm gonna uh, let me just do the polls a sec. If someone asked about them, just let go. We'll see where we're at. I reckon. I reckon Will has be okay. Actually, I think they'll be pretty close. Um, hang on a sec. Will Hazard be rested? Seventy-one percent of people think yes. Twenty-eight percent say no. I don't think it's that. I think it should be closer than that. Personally, but maybe that's because I'm an owner. Um, who to take out for Coutinho? 61% say Hazard, 29% say Ali, and 9% just say don't bother with him, keep both of the other two. <laughs> uh, Game week 38 captain poll. I wonder if this had been the same had he not scored four goals, but 60% say Kane, 17% say Sanchez. 11% say Coutinho. I'm pretty, I'm a bit surprised that Coutinho and Sanchez are so close together. I guess it's just Middlesbrough. Um, 3% saying Jesus and 6% saying other. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think Kane's that far ahead of Sanchez? You do, don't you? That far ahead of Sanchez. 60%. Has the sound gone? Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Never mind. Everyone else could hear me. Uh, I can't really... Yeah, okay. Never mind. I've nearly finished this bit. Gabbiadini to Lorente, 50%. 20% say Gabbiadini and 16% say Vokes. 13% are you. Anyway, that's the polls. Can you hear me now? No, not really. I'm just trying to follow uh, Anish's little um, statement there about changing my frequency or whatever. I'm trying to work that out. <laughs> See if that helps. Change the frequency. Oh, right. Put it lower, I assume. That sounds weird. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't worry. It's only like stuff like that where I have to talk for long. Or longer. But can you hear me now? Or is it still bad? Oh, I guess you can't hear me. Anyway. I, I can hear you now. Hear you. Oh, you can? Yeah. 
basically I was saying Sanchez is like 17% Captain Paul Kane is 60% do you think Kane's that far ahead do you think he should be yes <laughs> I knew you were going to say that fair enough straight to the point I like it it works really well having someone for you to talk to Andy more of the same next season Luke I might have to start paying him all I heard was paying and uh, yeah if that you're offering to pay me then I'll take it <laughs> fuck's sake okay I'll see if it catches up a bit now alright Luke has a racing car seat and a castle <laughs> Yeah, that's my daughter's Peppa Pig castle. I spend hours and hours and hours uh, assorting Mummy Pig, Peppa Pig, all the various people into different positions. So if you don't have kids, you can look forward to that. Do I start Gabby Adini or King? We're both going to say King, right? Yep, that's easy. <laughs> that's just not even, not even up for debate. Um... Yeah, I know someone was saying it works really well having someone else on. I should, and you should come on more next season. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely up for that if you have me. I have to see. I'll have to watch it. I have to watch it back tomorrow and to score your performance. I'll go from <laughs> that. Uh, why are people talking about baby bells? Very strange. Baby bell. It's all about Marmite cheese. That's amazing. Do we agree with Mark that Hazard was the villain of the season? I mean, I kind of said in the scout cast I didn't necessarily agree with that, to be honest. I think we just... We just maybe picked him at the wrong times. I don't know who's the villain. Oh, Everton defence, I said. I don't know. Do you think Hazard was the villain of the season? Hmm... It's hard for me to say because I've had him in Sky for the whole season. So for me, he's done really well and I've liked him. Um, I've not, he was in day one and I didn't take him out and he's been there the whole way through. So I've got that sort of making me biased. But in terms of FPL, um, he's, he has been quite bad. He's been, but it's more on us, isn't it? We should have just left him in, That's I guess. I said, yeah. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I think when he said that, um, it was more a personal thing than him thinking that he's been like that for everyone all season. I, I still come back to I think Aguero, I said it at the time. I think Aguero has been a massive letdown from what we thought he was going to be, um, and for the cost that he is, to get three red cards, he's never yeah. did he even have one before that, and only there well, you mentioned it there. Only four braces all season. Um, he's you know he's, he's drip fed points and sort of made up for it a little bit in the in the later weeks of the season, but. Yeah, for me, he's been pretty I don't know bad. about you, but like when, I, when I'm about to go to the or whatever, I, I have a few notes with me, and I actually had a few players written down, and Aguero was on there middle of the ah. season, so I agree with you, for sure. Yeah. One of, anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go into it with the highest price tag, you're always going to run that risk. Do you remember when Van Persie was something like 12 and a half or 30 million and literally did nothing the whole season? I can't remember which one that was. I think it was uh, his final... What, was for Man United? Yeah, was it? His, he, he won. Wasn't his, yeah, it definitely wasn't his first season. He was only there for a couple of years, wasn't he? So it must have been. I think it was his second season where he didn't play that much. He was so good the season before. Yeah. We let him off. Um, there was a lot of hope for Martial at the start of the season. That's true. In fact, at the start of the season, game at one, it was a lot of people were looking at Martial or Mikatarian. Which one were they going to pick? Yeah, I remember. Neither of them was the option. <laughs> I remember rotating them around all the time. Do I go for the guy who's going to get all the assists? Do I get a guy who's going to get on the goals and was top scorer for Man United last season? Both <laughs> both shocking, really. Yeah, they would have been really poor, to be honest. Um, sell Ericsson or, or Ozil for Coutinho. Now, you hate Ozil, don't you? So I don't hate him. <laughs> you think he's overrated? I... I think I've said it before when I was having this argument with people. The reason I dislike him, or like the same way I put Aguero as villain of the season, is I think they've got so much more to give. And they, when I used to watch Ozil back in the day for Germany in the international tournaments, I used to think he was absolutely fantastic. But since Real Madrid let him go and he come to Arsenal, I just I don't think he's he's lived up to what he potentially could be. I know he had one great season in FPL where he got those 19 assists. He did really well. Can't argue with that. But I think that should be his standard around there because he doesn't do much else. And it's generally dipped below that. 
I mean, this season he's been shocking in parts. Absolutely shocking. Um, and f- I don't I, I hate him so much because I want him to be better. It's not... That, that, that's where it comes from. I mean... So, so who, who would you sell out of the two? Ozil or Ericsson? I would sell Ozil. Because, I think I would too. Because I think Ericsson has been nothing short of amazing and he had his rest last week so surely he continues to be amazing yeah. I know it. that's kind of how I look at it to be honest I mean Ozil did create a ridiculous amount of chances uh, last game but I just I just think Ericsson's going to be back and it's a good fixture so yeah I think I think you sell Ozil and Phil the guy that asked the question with Phil and he agrees with us so there we go we gave him the answer he wanted <laughs> what happened to Mark joining? I, he, was, he was never like that. Wasn't ever a guarantee. Uh, James has put there. Alonso is the villain for me. Put Rose in as Alonso's clean sheet drops. Then he started scoring goals. Yeah, James, I can see that. I haven't owned him all season, so yeah, um, he's been a massive villain for me. It literally, it's like it's been horrible. It's been a horrible experience watching him play and just thinking, my God, this guy is incredible. But what? What made you not get him then? Because the one of the reasons I got him is because I watched him and I remember going on the scout cast and, and I said something like, ignore the stats. If you watch him, you will not be able to not bring him in your team because he's just mm. so far forward. It's ridiculous. And it doesn't matter that he can't shoot because at the time I remember thinking he's not, he's, he's such bad shooting and he's left wing back to be fair. But I yeah. think he's going to shoot so much, something's going to go in. I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Because I had Walker pretty much from... Okay. I don't know if I had him straight away, but I, I must have got him in the first few weeks. He was cheap, wasn't uh, he? Yeah. Um, and over the course of the season, Walker's not scored that much less than Alonso, I don't think. So he has been a good option. Um, and it just so happened that I always had fires to put out. I could never justify bringing in a six, six and a half million defender. Um, I should have, and the justification was clearly there. But I also think, do you remember when Alonso went on about nine game run of no clean sheets and not doing anything yeah, for a that while? Was recently, or to be fair, it's probably about, I mean, the end of that was about four or five games. Yeah. Left. So, again, because I take Sky as my main game, I got Alonso in in Sky. So I've kind of satisfied that urge. Yeah. And then, because I've got Walker and everyone else has got him, I just, I mean, I, again, the whole thing when you asked on the Scoutcast at one point about blocking and stuff, I wanted to bring him up as an example. I go, if I wanted to block or i ever done that, I would look at, I'd look at the Bods and Cons League. Everyone had him. I'd have done that a long time ago. I didn't. And yeah, it was obviously a bad error. But at one stage, I thought it was pretty good because everyone was even considering selling him because he went for those nine games of doing nothing yeah. and he was obviously cost a lot of money. And then he just came out and exploded again. But I think that's one thing I'll probably take into next season is if a defender that everyone has got is absolutely smashing it, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. I'm going to have to find a way. And I think with... Um, I said, again, I said on the scout cast about, yeah, I've taken a lot of hits, but for a lot of them, I've thought long-term. And I, I just think if, if wing-backs and 3-5-2 three, three, formations are going to be the new thing, then we have to start ditching the defenders aren't worth a hit and think about it long-term. Mm. And it may, even, it, may, it may even be the case that we go a little bit more expensive at the back to get those wing backs because they're going to be pricey, right? And yeah. then we go, we look for the Josh Kings of this world in midfield and we maybe avoid a little bit of midfield. But I don't know. Again, I think everyone's going to have Kane and Jesus. I think we're going to look for these wing backs. Then how are we going to be able to afford Hazard, Sanchez, KDB? I'm already dreading it. Ali, there's people out there that you want because they're strikers. So it's like, wow. It'd be uh, interesting to see. I mean, Alonso is going to have to be seven million at least. But it'd be interesting to see if he's any more because this year they kind of reduced overall the prices of defenders and goalkeepers. Mm. I don't know if that's just because no one. I can't really remember the previous season where no one really scored huge because I know like in some like I think Ivanovic was seven at the start of one season because of his score the previous year, but there wasn't many players, many defenders above six this year. No. And obviously Alonso will have to be seven, but I wonder if they'll go any more because he's probably a seven point five almost when he's on like top form. Has anyone ever been seven five? What was Baines? Has he ever been seven five? Is he probably the highest, wasn't he? I don't know him and him and Ivanovic from like I like from since I've been playing have been the highest. I don't know if they went above seven though. I, I don't. Okay, there you go. Someone said in the chat Baines was seven point five. Someone also saying if Alonso is seven million, no one will get him. I, I don't think that's true at all. Mm. 
think I think seven million is a, a perfect price to pay for him. Really, I mean, I'm the I'm the perfect person who would end up buying him no matter what, just to make sure it doesn't happen to me again. <laughs> I think I'd get him if he was ten, just to make the point. Obviously, you don't have you don't have um, players all season like in FPL at least. So Alonso, but Alonso scored 175. That beats like every midfielder apart from six. So seven million is is fair. Honest, I, I think. And, and the other thing with defenders is you can be fairly sure that they will return a certain amount at least like I know last season is not a good example because of the Leicester and Chelsea thing but if you go through like history of say Arsenal, Spurs, City, Chelsea at the end of the season they always end up with around 14, 15 clean sheets it's like pretty much standard like that is what you're going to get so you can almost guarantee there will be points there for Alonso in some way shape or form with the midfielders you can't do that you can't be 100% sure that they well not 100% but you can't be as sure that they will return that steady figure so they are a safe option and it, it like is a defender, a defender doesn't necessarily need to be informed to get points yeah whereas and the midfielder it, probably does Josh King could have, let's face it, scored anything from what he's got this this season so far to pretty much nothing because he he didn't play at front and he wasn't in form. That could happen next season. Josh King could suddenly go rubbish again. We've seen it so many times where a midfield has been fantastic and then gone rubbish. I mean, Mahrez, not quite rubbish, but he's not far off. Um, there's been another one, Michu. Remember Michu, he's absolute godly and then yeah. he was pretty much dire. Uh, this, this, the list is endless. Ramsey. I mean, Philman's, Philman's saying as well that... Um... Obviously, we, I, I don't know if someone like Alonso would get rotated too much, but obviously Chelsea will be in Europe next year. So will Liverpool, probably. Mm, so it's going to be a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Like, I mean, people forget that they've not had to play in Europe at all this year. Yeah, that's a good and point. And no, Chelsea have had barely an injury, to be honest, to their first eleven. Um, yeah. Which really helped them out. Yeah, they've been crazy lucky with injuries. So, so like we said, we're going to have to treat next season as if it's a new season and try and forget what happened before really yeah it's always different you can't really learn too much really <laughs> you just have to go with the flow uh, just trying to find some questions I can't believe um, there's not, people must have their game week 38 teams nailed I suppose there's not a huge amount to think about this this week apart from your own personal wild cards uh, mini leagues I just think so much is unknown and so much of it is seen as a lottery that what what advice can we really give people? <laughs> There's not much. I know, we've been sat here for nearly two hours, so hopefully we've, uh, we've uh, given them something. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. all right, well, look, we'll just do, we'll do maybe 10 more minutes. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's fine. So any questions off topic or whatever, fantasy football, football, if you want to ask Luke how, uh, how well he's doing in Pokemon. <laughs> everything goes uh, if we had Pedro or Fabregas would it make oh sorry if I had Pedro or Fabregas would it make Hazard to Coutinho easier um, pr- probably I suppose but I'd probably try and find the money to do Pedro or Fabregas to him instead Imagine you can only have one next. Oh, no, the question's coming in. Imagine you can only have one next season. Alonso at seven point five, or King at six point five to seven. I probably choose Alonso because I just don't know if King will do it again. I'd, I'd probably go with Alonso as well because I guess it's what I've mentioned before. I Alonso, you'd be pretty safe with points, and King could could suddenly be rubbish again yeah I, I'm going to be really put off uh, King next year I think uh, what's he put that as good as Luke is maybe you should have a different guest every week Andy <laughs> I, yes, I tell Phil. you how like, people always say this about the scout cast right that we should get a community member every week it's a pain in the ass getting different people every week I'll tell you now because like before Luke came on I had to make sure that everything was set now that's a one time thing I have to do but then I have to make sure the next person has a mic can have a webcam it sounds good there's no connection issues it's just it's just extra work to be honest plus look how good looking Luke is I don't know about that what's my rank on Sky I am currently 290th in the world I think Something like that, which sounds good, but in Sky, uh, if you're not top 100, then it's, well, for me anyway, if I'm not top 100, I feel like I've had a poor season. Um, 
I don't know if you, you who that is. They played Sky a lot, but I've come fourth. I've come twenty fourth. I've come thirty sixth before. So it feel, after that, it feels Got shocking. It <laughs> yeah, but two ninety, I'll take it. It's decent. I've won money again in uh, cash leagues and stuff. So yeah, um, fairly happy, I guess. Yeah, just to follow. Sorry, just to go back to another point. I'm not saying we won't get people. Like I might even try and do one of these with like three or four people, but. Uh, it's not going to be a different person every week. I can't be bothered with that, to be honest. <laughs> Luke is way better than Granville. Oh, my God. What will, what will the fanboys say? No way. I might tell him that. See what he says. As I wrote on Twitter on May the 6th, Sané and Sterling had shooting practice. What? No, I'm saying they needed shooting practice. They're Not that they had it. I think, <laughs> anyway. Why don't I like Snapchat? Because I'm too old for Snapchat. Do you use Snapchat, Luke? No, I can't be asked of it seriously. I, I feel like such, you know sometimes like you get older and you just say some stuff or whatever, and you just think, oh, that's what my dad would have said. Like I just can't be asked of Snapchat. I like Twitter, so that's what I use. I use Twitter to follow football, and that is essentially it. I think maybe a couple of other things. Um, far too old for Snapchat. No one wants to see a photo. Why would anyone want to see a photo of me or anything I'm doing? I don't get that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I do use it a bit if I try if I remember, but yeah, I generally don't like it. Um, am I shy, or are we shy with taking hits because it's the last game of the season? Yeah, I mean, I like hits, but when it's one game week, you've got to make it back that week, so I'm, I'm always a bit more uh, put off with it. I guess you're the same. Mm. You've got to make it back that week. Uh, what's he saying there so Fuzzy the disable reference I think I mentioned in the chat I used to game a lot far too much hold pants sat in front of TV 18 hour scenario and um, Guild Wars is a game similar to WoW which is yeah obviously incredibly sad and uh, there was a Mesmer that your job in that was to shut down the enemy caster so henceforth disable them and that's what I called myself disabled just plucked it out of nowhere and it just stuck with me I never bothered to change it and that's where it came from. Job done. Yeah. Uh, have you, or us, or any of the fantasy football scout team been recognised in public? I definitely haven't. I guess Mark probably has at this point. I'm, I'm assuming Mark will have been. There's no way I'll have been in. Re- no, no way. Yeah. I, li- I, li- I live in Bedford. Um, no <laughs> one lives in Bedford, so no. I did once. I went to London last uh, over Christmas or just before Christmas. I saw four guys on a table. And they all had their phones out, checking their scores. I really want to go over them and give them some advice. <laughs> I have had I have heard people talking about it on the train before, and you almost want to say, "Oh, did you know that I'm well into fantasy football?" And like, here's me on some YouTube video chatting to three guys. I love it loads, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think they talk to me for longer than thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, look, we just we don't take it that seriously. Would you piss off? Yeah, that's always the thing. Don't you hate that? I know we've discussed this before, but you mention what you're into, you make the mistake of dropping your hobby, and then people try to like almost uh, humour you by show. oh so did you do well last night did your team do well how did you and then they go well how does it work then how did... and you just I just think ah, oh, should I even bother telling them I always want to go just don't even bother asking me to be honest like, I haven't got the time <laughs> yeah if you're not bothered don't worry about it Scout Camp might get paparazzi this year Scout Camp might the Scout Camp location might be uh, made public but you have to wait for that um You'd buy us a pint if we come to NYC. You'd have to buy the flights too. Yeah. So, okay, so this is a question for me. Is Hazard Coutinho happening? Uh, I think I'll probably end up doing it. But I won't do it till tomorrow or Sunday. Yeah, I think I may be following you in that, Andy. So, we'll, um, yeah, we'll both go down together. I'll, I'll, I'll tweet out my team anyway as normal uh, tomorrow. What else have we got here? Will you? Br- this is for you. Will you bring in Tadic, Tadic next season? He's not even on penalties now. What else is he worth? Depends. If he was extremely cheap and he looked like he was nailed, then maybe it's always down on the price, isn't it? And he is. He has been good in the past. His numbers are usually good, but off the off the basis of what we know right now and all the midfielders I'm thinking of, he's nowhere near the top. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. Yeah, I I think like say if he's maybe five and a half six. Maybe we can start thinking about him. One last live transfer. No, not for me, I'm afraid. No transfers tonight. I'm, it's the last game week. I'm not bothered about money. I might as well wait for 
as much news as possible, I think. Do I play Call of Duty 1 on the PC? Um, I actually represented... Um, well, I played it pretty... I mean, Andy will tell you, actually, because I think he's been involved in some of my Battlefield games. I fancy myself as a bit of a gamer. And um, I represented the UK at Unreal Tournament 2004, if anyone knows what it is. And I did play Call of Duty 1 to a pretty high level. I was proper geek. Um, so, yes, I did play that. Yeah, he's very good at shooters. It's annoying, to be honest. Yeah. When, you're, when you're me and I'm bad. <laughs> Don't get Thoughts. as much time to lie now, though. Go on. Thoughts on the European football show on BT Sport being cancelled? Yeah, I saw people moaning about that on Twitter. i got to be honest, I don't even know what it is. I don't subscribe to BT, so... I can't say I'm that bothered. You, no. <laughs> you probably get recognised by some people, but they don't say it. I doubt it. It's not like fucking Tom Cruise or something walking down the street. <laughs> don't do yourself an injustice. Mate. You're at least twice the size of Tom Cruise. Anyway, in height, I meant in height. Let's just clarify that. <laughs> It yeah. always he's a short motherfucker though to be fair um, would we go for Cahill Lalana, Fabregas or Pedro that's a weird choice having to pick one of them I guess Fabregas or Lalana. Mm-hmm. if Cahill's going to start I guess he's got maybe a golden clean sheet in him yeah, if, if, if we were sitting here and saying all four of those definitely start, then I'll go Fabregas, but um, I don't think he's going to start. I think he'll get minutes. And we'll go I think back around. Lallana's the best option then, just because he's probably going to start. Yeah. Um, I think Kale starts. This should be a cleanie, right? Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. I think even Defoe's given up. Am I still doing the stream during games on Sunday? No, I can't. i got to go out. I'm afraid... Double Arsenal or double Southampton defence uh, Southampton defence this week I'd probably still back Arsenal but I don't know What moves am I making? I've got two free transfers so I'm probably doing Hazard to Coutinho unless I'm going to leave that to the last minute in case there's like any rumours getting off the bus all that sort of stuff who's turned up um, so yeah, Hazard to Coutinho and probably Trippier to um, Matip, but I'm not sure on that now because Trippier might be fit, and I think maybe Trippier's got as good a chance of doing something as Matip. Maybe I don't know, not decided. Uh, with the Reed news, are we both saying Vokes over Lorente? The, the polls say opposite. I I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Lorente to be honest, and I wouldn't really be the biggest fan of Vokes, but he's at least in form. Yeah, Lorente is clearly going to be the better player, <laughs> but uh, Vokes is in good form, and I'd probably go Vokes here yeah, just because we don't know what we're going to see from Swansea. Who do we want to replace David De Gea if he leaves? To be honest, I don't know if we could do much worse than, or well, not much worse, but I don't know if it'd be that bad to actually have a Romero starting as number one. To be honest. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know. But goalies are hard because there's probably none in the Premier League. Like, you wouldn't want Pickford or someone like that. There's that guy in Serie A that's really popular. Don Amaro or whatever he's called. Really young though. I don't know. It's tough for me. Might go back to Atletico Madrid, Mark, with that old pull back or whatever his name is. Pull back. What's the rumour? Yeah. Yeah. It's just whether or not you can get him. I don't know. Romero did, has done really well in the Europa League this year. Obviously you could say that the quality is lower but it's probably not too much lower than some of the Premier League teams you face, uh, would face mm. you wouldn't take Pickford then if he said to you he is Pickford I don't know obviously Pickford's he's I don't know to be honest I, I'd maybe like him as a backup for a bit and then see I don't know if he's ready to go straight into a team like Man United obviously he's a good shot stopper mm. but it's just a, it's just a whole different ball game when you go to a bigger club I think you've got he's got to be organising the defence yeah, it's not. It's not necessarily all about stopping the ball. Then, um, he did. To, to be fair to him, one thing I like about De Gea is he can really distribute the ball well with his feet. And Pickford, yeah, is also pretty good at that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. it's a confidence thing, isn't it? An aura of confidence. And Pickford, like you say, I think he's just a bit too young for that. A bit too raw. But I think he might go to Everton though. And that could happen. He's certainly an amazing shot stopper. I'd definitely give him that. 
Pick, uh, yeah, see, illusions. Pickford is one of those keepers that looks good because he gets battered every game. It's probably fair. It's true because I think I think I may be right in saying this, and because obviously Sky does uh, does save points in more detail than FPL. Sunderland have probably had the the keeper who has faced the most shots, no matter who it's been, pretty much every season or there or thereabouts. Doesn't matter who it's been, like Manone, Pickford, and who was the uh, the other guy they had before that. They were all three of them, whoever the other name is, who escapes me. Their other keeper before that, literally just so many saves every single season. Yeah, he. Uh, that's what I mean. I suppose if you, it's almost like if you throw enough shit, some of it will stick. Like if he has enough shots, he's always going to save some of them. Yeah, I, I don't want to like put him down. So I think he is going to be a good keeper. I just that's I'd it. Like to maybe get Pantamillion. So Pantamillion. He had it exactly the same, and even Mingale before it. The Liverpool got him. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, they've always been good buys in, uh, in FPL. Strange question, what ISP do I use? Uh, I use Virgin Media as well. It's mostly fine. Apart from when Luke can't hear me. <laughs> so I've got, the connection's like, i got like a 240 meg connection or something like that. Should, should be alright, but like you say, it's probably just lagging a bit because it's trying to do so much. Mm. Do you play Overwatch? Someone's asking. No, and I really wish it did because it looks exactly my kind of game. Um, yeah, I but I just think it's a bit too late. It probably isn't too late to get into it, but um, uh, yeah, that game's gonna be around a while. I think. Yeah, just not. Maybe I will. I just I can only play one thing. I only get time for one game at a moment. And at the moment, I'm playing Mario Kart on the Switch. <laughs> the thing is, I think with what I found with Overwatch is it's a frustrating game to play on your own. Whereas like Call of Duty, like you could go in and you'd win a game on your own. In Overwatch, I don't know if you can be that good that you win a game on your own in most cases. Because it is like yeah. different roles for each character. Yeah. And that's the problem then. You need a squad of people. You know, I'm not you know, I'm not going to play it that much at 33 yeah. years old. None of my friends have even got a PC, I don't think. <laughs> uh, would I ever be interested in making a Man United fan channel? Your knowledge of football is fantastic. I don't know if that's true, to be honest. Um, no, nah, I think like fan challenge, you got to be like, you got to at least pretend that you're really hyped about stuff, and as you can tell by my voice, I'm a dull fucker. You got to be, you got to get really excited for a fan channel. <laughs> when yeah. are we gonna stream FIFA again? I don't know. Big Royce, I'm not ignoring you, but I'm not telling the joke either. Uh, I've always been Pez as well. Whoever just said that, I've always been pro Evo. Couldn't get on this. Uh, Switch to FIFA. I, I, I like people say it's biased now, but I've never been into Pro Evo. Even when like Pro Evo was considered the better game, mm. I still played FIFA. Oh, I, I, used to, I, don't know I used to play FIFA for a laugh, like World Cup '98, and get the keeper and just do eight skills, go up the pitch <laughs> and smash it in the top corner, and just think this is a joke of a game. But it was fun at least. But um, uh, all right. I, so sorry, go on. I was just going to say, as soon as it. Be- Pro Evo went down here when FIFA swapped. I just never followed it, and I've, I've pretty much never played football since. Oh, fair enough. Mm. Sensible soccer back in the day. Yeah, that was the way. All right, someone asked this. I knew this question was going to come up. I can't believe it took nearly two hours. Right, I've answered this before. Oh, where's Mark from? Well, that doesn't really matter. How do you know him? Well, I I don't know about you. I just posted a lot on Fantasy Football Scout, basically. How do I know Mark? Um... Yeah. Um, just yeah pr- pretty much uh, I, th- I think the way that he I'll start again I, I was played I played Sky and I lurked because um, I didn't play FPL at all I think um, I literally played if you look at my history this is probably going to go on longer than you intended but I may as well give you the story from the beginning if you're alright I'm good if you ever go look at my history uh, you will see that I played FPL in 2007 and 2008 and had a rank of 263,000 I can't even tell you if I played that season if I made any transfers if it was a dead team what I I literally have no recollection of that I was about 20 years old so I can only imagine that I searched fantasy football on a browser found this site didn't understand it and played it I'm pretty sure that's what happened Um, because before that um, I only played fantasy football once at school when I was 16 uh, against teachers and stuff. He had his own setup game, the teacher did, and I hadn't played it since. And then my mates all started, my mate contacted me uh, after, a little while after that and said, oh yeah, do you want to start doing this? I think it was Telegraph or Mail. So I started playing Telegraph or Mail uh, with like a friends league for, for cash. Um, doing pretty good at that. It started to get into it. 
and then moved on to Sky when that came out. I think that was around 11, 12. Um, and that's when I started playing FPL. So my history then from 2011 to 2012. So it was a missed, I missed out, what, two or three seasons there where, but didn't even play the game. Even in that 11, 12 and 12, 13, where I came 49,000 and 27,000, I didn't actually even pay that much attention to the game. I was in no mini leagues, as far as I'm aware. Um, I was just doing stuff where my Sky was my main team and I would just pick a crazy captain like every week. You know, I'd look at it every other week. I don't know if people were just worse back then at the game or I was just getting lucky, but they seem like pretty good ranks now because from my past history, yeah, like like last season, 164,000, I gave that my full effort and I did far worse. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. Uh, and it's only in 2013-14, 580th. So towards the end of 12 or 13, I posted in Fantasy Football Scout because it was all it was all FPL related. I was only interested in Sky, so I didn't really comment at all. No one really talked about it. And I think the game came out really early at the end of 2012-13. It, it was the first game to launch and people were quite excited about Sky because they had someone, you know, a, a player list to play with, things like that. And it got a bit of um, hype on the site a little bit. So I posted a, uh, something saying, I've done really well in Sky. I've been coming top 100 for a while. Here's a few players that I'm in, that, you know, you should take a look at. And then Mark contacted me and basically said, do you want to write our Sky stuff? Oh, and by the way, you may as well join our FPL team and join our league. And that's when I got a mo- got into the Mods Con League and actually started taking it seriously. Like, oh, well, I've just been signed up to Fantasy Football Scout in a way, so I've yeah. got to take it seriously and try and beat these guys and show them, you know, I am the best fantasy manager of all time. Which, uh, it actually Never happened. happened. It yeah. actually <laughs> happened. I won the Mods and Cons League in that first, league, uh, first season. I come 580th, I beat everyone. Apple Bonkers would have beat me, but he never joined the league for some reason. So it, technically, I guess you could say maybe I didn't, but he was never in the league. Nah, I came that counts. I came fourth in Sky in that same season, so it just so happened it was my best ever season in all fantasy games. So I came fourth in Sky in the world, 580th in FPL, absolutely smashed it. Um, and then 14.50, and, that, and that's when obviously I met Mark. So go back to the original question, he, I started writing the Sky articles for him. So I've known him for about four years. Um, been going to the scout camp, helping him out behind the scenes with other things, not just Sky really, just little bits and bobs. Um, and then, yeah, I started taking it seriously from them. So. 580, 3,700 did pretty well, and then an absolute shocker last season that I wish I could write off. And I don't know if anyone else feels like this to completely off on a tangent here, but say that 2007 and 8 season for me, which is just like miles in the past, I wish there was a way you could just eradicate that. But I suppose because <laughs> it, it affects you in the Hall of Fame, doesn't? Not that I'm not that I'm not that bothered about it, but it does affect you quite negatively, doesn't it? To have a poor rank back in the yeah, they changed the algorithm recently so that like I don't think past ranks get affected so much, but they're still taken into account. All right. Okay. So I think it, I think more of your more recent ranks are now weighted higher or something like that. I don't know the exact. Yeah. The exact thing. It's a shame you can't get rid of them, but then I suppose there's loads of people who would just blag it and say, "Yeah, that wasn't me playing." Exactly. That wasn't me playing. Yeah. So you just got to suck it up and uh, and take Everyone's it. got an excuse for their bad ranks. Me too. Yeah. There's always something that happened, or you won't play. Like I, I had the same. Like I said earlier, I played. I was working nights. I just didn't have the time for it. Really. I was. When the games were being played, I was going to sleep, so I just didn't really care as much. Yeah. But it's, it's the thing of having a mini league. For me, when I looked at FPL, I didn't understand it when I first came to it. Prices all over the place. I had no idea what it all meant, the change in prices. If you're playing with no one and you're just looking at your overall rank and you're like one million in the world, what, what do I care what, what yeah. I was doing? Do you know what I mean? And as soon as I joined the mini league with, with the people, that's when I started trying to think, well, I better do something here. Better try and win it. I've got some competition. But uh, Mark and those, are, they're just too good, man. Mark and uh, he's just, yeah, he's they're absolutely, real pros. they're real pros, yeah. Can we hear your story? Like mine's like, I just posted a lot and became a moderator pretty much after a while. And then I got, I only got on the scout cast because Granville couldn't make one week and I could. And then Granville stopped going and I didn't, basically. And then just do a bit of stuff behind the scenes, blah, blah, blah. Not much different, really. Apart from I've never finished 580 in the in the league, I'm pretty awful. That was just fluke. I did so good in the sky, and I just kind of mirrored it for the first time. But that, that's why I think, I've, compared to you guys, I've you know you know that I take a little bit more risks and stuff. It's because I see FPL as my second game, so it yeah. gives me that option. You know, if it was my main game, every time that you guys are talking who you captain in this week, whoever you guys have picked as the default, you can bet your life he's my captain in the sky. It's just that I tried to do something a little bit different in FBR. That's fair enough. Mm. Right, I think we can probably finish up. 
Um, I suppose last thing, like I said, I'm going to probably bring Coutinho in. Probably for Hazard, maybe for Ali, and I'm going to captain... I think I'm going to captain Kane now. I think you might have swayed me enough. I guess no. you're captain in Kane, all right? Well, do you know what? One thing I, I've noticed in this is form seems to come into it when it's FPL related as well. People go on runs of form, like you had to storm up and stuff like that. And right now, I hit form for the last two weeks, and I like to think it's going to continue, and I'll just have the lucky golden touch. So I'm going to go Kane and just hope that that is the case. <laughs> I'd probably bring in Coutinho, yeah? I'm probably bringing Coutinho, yeah. Fair play. All right, so we're going to leave it there. Um like subscribe all that good stuff you haven't already done while you've been watching uh people asked me earlier if there's going to be another stream <sighs> maybe i might do one on um i want to do it when the ranks are in so i don't know if i want to risk saying i'm going to do one on sunday because i don't know how long they're going to take to update the final game so i might do one on monday just to wrap up but i don't know if there's going to be too much to talk about really so i would say consider this the last stream um and if there's another one that's a bonus oh yeah i'll quickly do the polls hang on a sec my bad no i'm not dabbing come on did you dab while i wasn't watching me yeah no oh i thought you said you did um Oh, you're probably going to lose me when I chat about this, so just bear with me a sec. So, Game Week 38 captain poll. Kane is 60%. Sanchez, 17 Coutinho, 11 uh, Other is 6%. And Jesus is 3%. Will Hazard be rested? 67% of people say yes. Uh, Who do you take out for Coutinho? 59% say Hazard. 30% say Ali. And 10% say keep both. And then Gabbiadini to Lorente is the highest, 48%. Keep Gabbiadini is next highest, 20%. And then Vokes, 19 Origi, 11 So that is that. Did you did you lose me there? I lost you a little bit, but... Okay. It's all right. It was for the stream rather than you anyway. You already, uh, you already know what's going on. Um, so yeah, consider this the last stream. There may be one more as bonus. Cheers for tuning in. Obviously, we've only been doing this since January, so we'll uh, we'll kick this off from the uh, from the season start next year. Um, I'll probably do a stream around when the price rise, uh, price changes. Uh, fuck say, price list comes out, um, and just keep an eye on Twitter. I'll uh, keep you all updated there. But yeah, I'll see you later. Good luck for this week. Um, and cheers for joining, Luke. I think people enjoyed that. And I'm sure you'll be around more for next season, yeah? Uh, You've lost me, haven't you? Yeah, I think I, <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah, I will try to be around for next season. If you, yeah, need, if you so want you, me. You'll yeah, you'll be around for next season. If you yeah, want not a problem. I will try my best. All right, cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.